By the time the police reached the scene, 11 children and two adults had been stabbed. Two young girls were already dead. Six-year-old B.B. King and seven-year-old Elsie Dot Stancombe. At least seven of the other children were in a critical condition. So were the two adults. The attacker was arrested. A 17-year-old male from Banks in Lancashire, who is originally from Cardiff, has been arrested on suspicion of murder and attempted murder. And is being taken to a police station where he will be interviewed by detectives. Nine-year-old Alice da Silva Aguiar died in the hospital early Tuesday morning. The others are stable, but they aren't out of danger. Yesterday, the town was in mourning. It's live. It's live. Nothing you say they're interested in. None of it. Nothing you have to say. American, British, whatever. They're not interested in y'all anymore. There's nothing you can say to them. They've been set off. They've been set off. It's live. Christ is king. Christ is king. Stop the boats. Panic on the streets of London. Panic on the streets of Birmingham. Well, okay, that's different now. That's different. That's different. But, you know, you know, either way, counter, initial, counter, initial, it's still fitting. Panic on the streets of London. Panic on the streets of Birmingham. I wonder to myself if mass immigration just might have been a mistake. To those levels, I wonder to myself, you know, will they ever fess to it? Will they ever fess to it? Christ is king chance. That's US stuff. That shouldn't be UK stuff. But I wonder to myself, you know, if they knew that they had this contingent, that it wasn't just opposed to immigration and to, you know, your xenophilic narratives. They're not just xenophobic. No, they're, they're motivated to go out. You know, I don't know who set the fire, whether it was the counter protesters or the initial, you know. But it's not just that you couldn't sway them, you UK official them. So there's a UK official them, kind of from one party to the next. There was a kind of official them that said, even if we disagree with mass immigration, we're not going to say it's impermissible. But here's kind of proof that, you know, like it should have been impermissible. It was an impermissible kind of mistake to last for this many generations. Because the official them had no clue how to actually talk to these people and dissuade them and discourage them and maybe even convert them to be pro-mass immigration. Which, setting aside even the riots, it's like, it's no, no, because then we lose out on accentism as a humor thing, because there's too many people with accents. But like, these people have other issues. For these people, it's deeper. They're not just xenophobic. It's, it's more than, it's, it's a very motivated kind of xenophobia. And there's nothing you or the UK official them can say to them to dissuade them. So it's like, why do you keep doing the mass immigration then, official them? Like, okay, maybe sometimes it's boats that like there's amnesty stuff. Sometimes there's amnesty stuff, but like. The legal immigration, for me, I just don't get why the legal numbers have to be, well, you gotta grow the pie, you gotta grow the pie. Not enough gardeners, you gotta grow the pie. It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. I was exposed to the attacks themselves before I read anything on this. Because the reaction is more interesting than the, you know, the reaction is always more interesting. <laughs> oh, we're chuds, we're chuds, we're chuds and loud and proud. We're chuds, we're chuds, we're chuds and loud and proud. That's like the chud anthem. I just made it up. That's the chud anthem. We're chuds, we're chuds, we're chuds and loud and proud. <laughs> It's an awesome anthem. It's about, it's about as lyrically good as like the typical nationhood anthem. Oh man, I can't. I want to I want to say so much more. You know, but this one's jam-packed as it is, but like new things happen every day, but this is jam-packed. 
Come on, you guys getting a U.S. a run for its money? Are you guys, Ben? Ben, why is your country giving the U.S. a run for its money? Ben, you're not. I might actually see Ben. I might actually see Skid Row Radio somewhere around here. You know, he's been absent the last couple of videos. I might just see him here. Maybe he's, maybe he's knee deep. You know, something, something with the anti-fash crowd. But you know. You know, it's just extreme nativists in the UK. That's all it is. They're, they don't have to be fascists. Fascists are the exterminationists, right? Without exterminationism, and it's like they want the undesirables out. They don't want the undesirables to be there so they can torture them and stuff. They just, don't, they just want the undesirables out. It's wrong to call it fascist. It's fanatical. It's melodramatic. It's, ooh, my heritage, my heritage. I'm incomplete as a person, so I need heritage narratives. You know, my ancestors, my ancestors sometimes. You know, it's, it's not high-minded, but it's wrong to call it fascist. You know, they're just chuds, and they're into nativism, and into their fellow Brits, you know, and the ancestry, the ancestry. They, they need to, their ancestors are cool, and the brownies don't, don't come from the same ancestors. So it's like, come on, they're not fascists. They believe in exit rights, like fascists denied exit rights. But it's like, they, they want to catapult the undesirables out. They don't want to kill them. They don't want to exterminate. It's not, fascism has to be exterminationism. But it's not high-minded, it's slow-minded. <laughs> Yeah, South Point stabbing attack. You know, it was already overflowing. It's just now burst. Now it has burst. You know, it's not morally impermissible to be xenophobic. You know, it's maybe not intellectually high class to be xenophobic. Just as, you know, it's not intellectually high class and you're not more attuned to reality if you're a xenophile, you know. You know, yeah, okay, better a world of xenophiles than these kind of extreme xenophobes. But if the xenophiles can convince the xenophobes, then like, why just give them so much? Why impose your xenophilia to this extent on, on your <laughs> co-nationalists? You know. Xenophobia is just kind of morally iffy if you do too much with it, like organize and, you know, do property damage and maybe hunt down minorities in the name of your fellowship surrounding xenophobia and racism. Uh, you know, I saw some tweets. I saw some tweets. They were saying, you know, the, the whiteies commit these things more, I, don't, I haven't vetted it, but it said the whiteies commit these things in the UK more than the brownies, kind of, but just barely, but it's like, but it's like when the brownies commit some bad thing, then it's like, oh, bricks fly, <laughs> bricks fly, the chat, I doubt the chat saying anything good, there's no stopping Islam, 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 oh, and he's doing it over and over. Islam, your time in UK is running out. God, 90% of the words, 90% of the words are Islam. Snack bar, aloha snack bar for 72 virgins. Oink, oh God. I'm just going to get banned for just panning to the chat. I'm going to get banned for just panning to the chat. Yeah, granny, you ain't going to sway them, granny. You're just talking to yourself and your fellow whatever. You know, what's, what's, what's Denny's in the UK? Do you guys have Denny's? Your fellow Denny's goers. <laughs> I guess, you know, I guess nativists go to Denny's too. You know, it takes, it takes guts. It takes a lot of motivation. They're not just armchair xenophobes and armchair racists. They're very motivated. They want their country back. They want their country back. There's nothing you can say that'll dissuade them. They want their country back. So at least ease. Ease the legal, ease the legal migration, you know, kill some dreams, some dreamers are just gonna have to. And these fucking provincial immigrant families. It's like, why do you guys wanna live in a country where you just, whose language you just can't learn or you just can't learn to pronounce? 
Do you need to earn more that badly? It's like you can't speak the fucking country's native language that well. You're not exactly fluent, even though you run a store and are an immigrant. Like, why, why is it just okay, like, being poor, but it's like you can speak the language of the country? I just don't fucking get it. Like, why is your money, money that important? Oh, gotta give my children a richer life. No, how about just give them a life where you're just not, you know, where they just, <laughs> they don't have to get involved in these kinds of things. You know, we're supposed to praise the hardworking provincial immigrant families for like wanting to, you know, come to like at least America and work like these 72 hour weeks running stores. Oh, that's just so great for their brains to run a store 72 hours a week, you know, or probably even more, right? <laughs> Panic on the streets. See, it's just, there's so many Smith songs. There's just, I, I read about this and then I went out for a walk and I'm playing the Smiths and there's so many Smith songs that I want to redo. <laughs> you know, and give him these pessimistic slants. Morrissey wasn't pessimistic enough. Give him these pessimistic sl slants. <laughs> All too black-pilled and dry. <laughs> I went to Belgrade and cried. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh God, all too black filled and dry. <laughs> That's the story of our life. You know, it doesn't mean the conservatives are right about everything. You know, if they're right about the... Just from the standpoint of the officialdom will fail to dissuade the people it calls fascists and all these other things, but who are just these extreme nativists? Like, why doesn't the officialdom take that more seriously in designing migration law? Like, you guys are not going to... Like, predictably, decade after decade. And, like, when they have the internet, like, they can communicate easier and, you know, organize this kind of stuff. It's just not a good scene. <laughs> Meanwhile, in America. <laughs> All right, JD, you and I are going to make history. For the first time ever, I'm going to do such a drive-by thumb. I'm going to utilize you right here, because I have no idea what to do for the thumb for the Natalist Lies video. But JD, I'm going to make use of you, because you're looking an awful lot like Krang in these three stills. I didn't plan this. Sometimes the best things are unplanned, right? Actually, very often, in terms of what I do on the internet, the best things are just abrupt. And I just figured, I don't know what to do for the thumb. I want to do a kind of drive-by thumb. And this is going to be kind of the centerpiece. Is JD looking like Krang from the Power Rangers, if Krang just looked more human? The perfect kind of, you know, I'm not above it, right? Ordinarily, I'd be above it. But his rhetoric is really just that stupid. And his beliefs really are that fatuous. And it's just the worst of human psychology is this Vance guy. Yeah, you're sociopathic, sociopathic. Right, you guys are the ones who have, you know, <laughs> no second thoughts whatsoever in terms of the horrific, for example, factory farming conditions, which, you know, meat country is very protective over. You know, cheap meat, but, you know, keep the factory farming conditions as they are. Essentially a holocaust, but, you know, that's, that's not sociopathic. It's the childless who are sociopathic. Yeah, JD, you're going to be the crank in my thumb because you earned it. But I feel a little bad, but you earned it. Ah, oh, sorry to say, he too engages in some of this red stuff in the thumbs, circle, hackery, arrows, hackery. But that's okay, Destiny. I forgive you once again. Concerned about the critical situation. In oh, this is such a legal dry video, but that's okay, Destiny. I'll forgive you again. But you know, he's such a he's such a stoic man child, considering that all the stuff that leaked about his docs, you know, roughly a week ago now, that's how slow I am. And he's just not bitching about it. He's just cool, calm, collected. But there was a mighty big mindless mob uh, on Twitter circulating his home stuff and you know, I don't know if I'd be able to be quite as stoic. He's just, he's just doing his thing. He's carrying on. But, you know, a lot of threats, some of the worst kinds of threats. I guess maybe that's what that's for in the background at all times. But come on, Destiny, you know, you, you don't need that. I'll protect you, Destiny. <laughs> I'll protect you the way MAGAs protect Trump. I'll pray for you. I'm told it works. Um, but, you know, he's got some, I heard he's got some, he's got some 
non-permissive views on abortion. It's just he didn't expound on it. This was a few months back, and I've just been waiting. I guess I just don't do the ar the Destiny archives because there's just so much new crap he's pumping out legal. You know, to do these live streams, you really got to do your legal homework. You know, the philosophy is light, but the legal theory knowledge is heavy. And that's why eh, I'm just not there for it. Um, you know, either in debates or just without a debate partner. He's just kind of doing research while he's recording himself. But I heard he's got some, you know, he doesn't have quite the permissive views on abortion that he should. And so I'm just, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to see, <laughs> I'd like to see if I could change his mind. But, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do the stupid, I don't want to do the stupid streams. But yeah. Destiny, why, if you, if you think that this is more of a gray area than it is this abortion stuff, then what? Why the hell aren't you agitating for? And you know, no one, I've never seen anyone do this. The people who, especially who say stuff like they're killing babies, they're killing children. But then why don't you people ever agitate for childhood mortality to include the miscarriages? I've never seen someone who talks about it, abortion, even in that first trimester or, you know, immediately after conception. They talk about abortion as the murder of the child or the baby, but then it stands to reason you'd be out there agitating to have all miscarriages counted as adding to the childhood mortality stats. But I've never seen anyone do that. Uh, not to impugn that Destiny would do that. Destiny just, I don't know, he just said something that it's like, come on, Destiny, expound on your views on abortion. When exactly would you have it legally <laughs> impermissible? What trimester? And then would that trimester, like if there was a miscarriage that happened, would you say that that should be counted toward childhood mortality? I'm saying that's stupid. Childhood mortality should only include, you know, deaths of children from, you know, age zero to five, infancy to five. We don't need to change that. But that's why I also believe it's absurd and just disgusting as rhetoric to say the abortion kills the child. It kills the baby. No, it kills the fetus, assholes. And just disgusting as rhetoric to say the abortion kills the child, it kills the baby. No, it kills... Considering, you know, most abortions are... You know, remember my video, I flashed the thing there. I'm sure those stats have now only ever become more flattering to the pro-choice side in terms of just the rareness of anything beyond that first trimester abortion. You know, but it's like even in the third trimester, there's a miscarriage. Just some kind of complication happens. Even those third trimester ones, no one's, no one's agitating to have, you know, counted as childhood mortality. You know, so it's all just about the rhetoric and the, you know, words taking the shape of actual concepts for them. Words play an outsized role for these people. They would connect these threads if they thought beyond the words. But it's, it's all just, it's all just demonization. They wang to the idea that they've successfully demonized people who get abortions. I said people because, you know, the, the couple sometimes decides. I didn't say people to flatter the trans crowd. I said, I said people because sometimes the couple jointly decides, you know. <sighs> why, did you, why, why did you couples conceive in the first place? It's not that difficult. <sighs> I, I, have, I have some rants to make about uh, tubes tying and vasectomies, but uh, that's for later. Are you ready for some passion? You're about to hear some destiny passion. Um, the, there are people in my community that I have conversations with. Uh, there, it's unfortunately just gonna be smaller content creators. People like yeah, I'm a small content creator. Yeah, debate me, destiny. Like Tim Pool have too much of a vested interest in keeping themselves stupid and keeping their audiences stupid to have critical conversations. That's why they bring people on and they don't prep them on the topics and they just bring up like fake news on their monitor to read off so that they can, can have their debates and do their uh, you know mutual sucking contests. I remember in 2020, I think it was toward the end of the messianic pop populism video messianic populism intensifies i did this 10 minute vent at the end of the video pretty damn venomous against tim pool and i remember i was like oh, i feel a little bad maybe i don't watch tim pool enough maybe i'm jumping the gut on tim pool <laughs> see that's just how fair i am i watched enough of him to know he's a known quantity but i still like no maybe i just didn't watch enough or and then same thing with every other quote unquote centrist channel, right? How do you call yourself, Lauren? How do you call your program trigonometry 
and then you get triggered because I have a little joke at, at some dude getting blown away at some fat at a, at a some pro Putin being a loser at a Trump rally. That's the thing that triggers you. Like, oh, I can't have this guy on my show anymore. Bullshit. Eat shit, motherfucker. How many jokes do you think this guy has made at BLM people dying? Or do you think he's made Pelosi husband jokes? Get the fuck out of here. Okay, these people are not edgy. They're not centrist. They're not triggering anybody. They're just fucking conservative sucks. That's all they are. They're fish who don't know they're wet. Please start saying it, Destiny. You have mine and John McWhorter's blessing. They're a fish who don't know they're wet. Listen, if Constantine has made a joke about a BLM rider... Oh, wait, we don't, we, don't, we don't need to hear from you. No, we don't. Well, now, there's a set of words you don't see invoked in this order or any kind of order. Vivacious culture. Hmm, vivacious. So what are some of the vivacious and non-vivacious cultures in American life? And especially, we can ask, in American political life, right? Are both sides equally as vivacious and specifically around certain things we just understand psychologically but that are denied when you become vivacious? Certain things we all understand psychologically but the more vivacious of us forget when we're hypnotized by whatever it is that we're being vivacious about. You know, basic bitch, in-group, out-group, allurement, you know, these tugs. Now, the more vivacious you are, the more you are the dupe of those kinds of things. So are both sides in American political life, you know, equally as vivacious around that? I think one side expresses legitimate regret and, you know, talks about it with solemnity and maybe almost like grief. Yes, I mean the blue side. Instead of getting vivacious about this stuff, many of the, many of the blues, whatever their faults may be in terms of the excess of activism and you know, kind of maybe wanting to centralize more often, stuff like that. At least they don't have a vivacious, whatever, whatever else stupid crap they may be vivacious about, it's not in their political life. You know, they don't get off on the fact that um, they think the other guys are stupid. Like the MAGA, to the extent that MAGA thinks it's about stupidity, I don't think MAGA thinks it's about stupidity deep in their heart in terms of the other side's faults. I think MAGA thinks it's about a pathology on the other side that doesn't necessarily lend itself to a stupidity, generally. But, you know, MAGA thinks the other, the other folks are, the non-MAGAs, the, certainly the never-Trumpers, they think there's a pathology to this. And they're vivacious in their kind of, you know, portrayal of that. They, get, they, they suck each other off and there's a vivaciousness to them. It's the best way to summarize MAGA. You know, I guess I'm finding out the new better and better ways to summarize MAGA. And that is, like, MAGA's the more vivacious crowd, just in terms of how they go about their political understanding. They wouldn't talk the way they do had they not had a vivacious in-group, out-group, let's suck each other off uh, attitude toward political division and just other kinds of, you know, stupid psychometric divisions that, like, the, the greatest minds of all time have always condemned and, you know, in, in, encouraged us to get past it, to get over it, to be bigger than that. You know, certainly the Stoics. There's nothing Stoical about vivacious MAGA. You know, the Blues are not Stoical in many other important respects, but at least they try to be more Stoical. Like, just, just how polite Ezra continues to be to many of the... Uh, I mean, ugh. I just heard him reference Rufo... And give him a kind of objective, uh, the right-wing influencer, Rufo. And then he, he, like, he quotes something extremely stupid Rufo says, but he's so nice about it, and he doesn't even debunk it. It's like, Ezra is so non-vivacious, even though he has deep disagreements. Whereas, like, all the people who would, like, have disagreements with him and MAGA, like, they, they'd vivaciously diss him. But then but he just wouldn't, he would just be stoical in response. Like that's an important part of the MAGA blue, the red tent, blue tent divide in America. Like you guys are disgustingly vivacious. You know, I never draw attention to these blood sport debates on these live streams. Frankly, I never even watch them. Nowadays, I'll watch the occasional one involving destiny. And the one I'm gonna reference here is the one I think day or so after the assassination attempt, he was he went a good 30, 40 minutes up against Cat Canada. It's a it's a twatter personality, Twat Canada, and it truly was a bloodbath. None of the blood was destiny, but it truly was one of these bloodbaths. In in fact, I can't recall ever seeing a live stream debate, certainly one that had gone on for as long as it did, where it was just such a bloodbath from A to Z. And all the blood was just, just one-sided. It was, it was all Cat Canada's blood. 
she didn't seem to realize it and I'm sure that she just went back to Twitter and it was as if nothing happened. But it's the first thing I'm gonna link here, right? So before I even link my you know, chapters and all that kind of stuff, uh, it'll be the link to that debate. It's, it's on Destiny's channel. It was, it was a pretty good live stream overall, but his first uh, quote unquote opponent was Cat Canada. And just fact after fact, you know, the nitty gritty, you know, Destiny does his homework surrounding what exactly happened on January 6th. He loads up the footage and he just exposes. And because he loads up the footage of things happening, he just exposes how little to no homework these people do. But they latch themselves on to these narratives like, oh, the cops let them inside. And so then Destiny, he just zeroes in on how, you know, you just watch the footage enough, you'll see them breaking in, no cops involved whatsoever. And so he's just grilling her on this and showing how her, her narratives that she's latched onto are at best incomplete. And you know, all these sins of omission, right? And, and at worst, they're just flat out erroneous and maybe designed to even be erroneous. A lot of examples, but, but I bring it up not because I enjoy, you know, pointing out how, oh, look, a bloodbath, and especially, you know, a bloodbath with, you know, one of the MAGA proponents being uh, the victim. That's not why I bring it up. I bring it up because I know exactly what happened after that. She went back to Twitter, and it's as if nothing happened. I highly doubt she even watched that back, right? And so I'm just thinking, like, what do I do, right? Even before I, I put all this together, and record it. Well, I watch it and I rewatch it. And even after it goes up, before I move on to do the next thing, I'll just watch my video once it's up because it's it's got a different tinge once it's up, right? I've got a far more critical eye on myself post upload than I do pre upload. It's why often I do these, you know, follow up you know, kind of reviews of my own segments in the next video, right? Because I notice I'm, I'm, I'm more in a kind of comfort zone before it goes public than I am afterward. I'm, I'm far less in my comfort zone and I have a better bullshit detector in reference to myself once something I've recorded is publicly accessible than it is before. And so I've kind of encouraged this before, but I guess I'll just have to encourage it again. People, if you talk, like it's, I'm not even going to make it about audience capture and, you know, making money off of things you shouldn't be making money off of because it lends itself to audience capture. I'm not even gonna bring that up, right? But it is important to just kind of throw it out there since I, I guess I did, just, <laughs> I did just bring it up. You know, it's better to keep your day job than it is to run the risk of audience capture. But the main thing to point out is that I get the sense that nobody, nobody does this. Nobody just, and you know, maybe even watch yourself, whatever you did, maybe watch it more than once. Sometimes I pick things up on my second viewing of a video that I've done. You know, sometimes there's even been, you know, kind of a third viewing and I'll, I'll catch more, maybe not even errors, but I'll catch more kind of incompleted thoughts that I can follow up on the next day or whenever I choose to record next. You know, these kind of thoughts where it's like, I only went four fifths of the way that I could have gone. And you, so you kind of round out your thoughts better if you just watch what you or just listen to what you've recorded more. And I just get the sense that like this is this is why I'm just so disgusted by how ultra partisan everything is. People are so motivated to just do the next thing with each new day to just do that next adding to the chorus of noise because they feel like they're part of something far bigger than themselves. And so it's all about contributing to that chorus of noise in that kind of ant-like way. Each of us does our little part, right? And so that's just the motivation, right? They wake up every day, they see that there's a chorus of noise. They see that what the overwhelming majority of people are doing is going yay one side and nay the other side. And so that's all the incentives that they need is to, to contribute to one such chorus of noise in their own little way, right? Just contribute with yay one side, nay the other, discredits whatever you fear more, you know, fear clearly is a, if it's not audience capture, then it's just, you know, they're, they're intellectually primitive enough to just always be in this kind of fear mode, 
right? And so every day, forget what you did before. Forget about reviewing it. Forget about improving upon it, rounding out your thoughts by listening to what you recorded. Think, think about what a, just how much, how different things are even compared to 15 years ago where we can just, you know, we're out in the middle of nowhere. We can take out our phone and just record ourselves. And, you know, the audio quality ain't that bad because the mics have improved. What, what I would have thought this would have led to is people just kind of dwelling on their capacities to make arguments by just listening to themselves back. That's not what anyone does. Like, like it was an absolute bloodbath. Do you think she went back, this Cat Canada Twitter personality? Does anyone actually think? It's just click the first link. Watch Destiny go one-on-one -on -one with her for 40 minutes. I mean, just, just utter annihilation. She didn't incur any kind of a cost for being essentially clueless. Despite, you know, kind of coming in first, huffing and puffing. Like, it, it didn't matter. She probably didn't even watch the damn stream. She just went back and continued adding to that chorus of noise because that's, that's what conversation is. Conversation is not like review what you did so that you can maybe round it out or do it even better. Conversation, it's, it's, just, it's just what I said it is. And that's a travesty. It's a travesty that she's not <laughs> kind of in a, in a what is that, anxiety curveball. It's like, I should have done better in this. I should have done better in this. No, no. The only way she'll crawl up into that kind of anxiety curveball is if kind of her audience catches wind of it and says, wow, Destiny is right. Destiny made me realize that I've been batting for the wrong team. If she gets like dozens or hundreds of comments from her own crowd, maybe then she'll start realizing how atrocious of a performance of hers um, she, she did in that debate. But it has, to, it has to come down to that. The incentives always, has to, the, the incentives always have to be socially aligned. And, you know, blah, 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 party ends above intellectual ends, all this kind of stuff. This, this has to change. This has to change. If there's a bloodbath that's this glaring, like the, the person who was <laughs> blooded, bloodbathed, like they, they have to realize that they have to do better. Even if none of their audience members tells them off. But it seems like the only way people can be incentivized to do better when they bomb this hard in a live exchange is if they're like dogpiled by their own audience. And that just doesn't happen. So like partisanship, you know, people are worried about partisanship and ultra partisanship and polarization because, you know, it takes its toll on civics. Civics is dragged down, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just, I'm just looking at like how it worsens the minds of the participants. It worsens your minds in ways you people will never know. You all need to be a, more, a lot more like me. Like, I'm not, like, w whatever. I'm, I'm not motivated to add to the course of noise on a daily basis or hell, even a weekly basis. I'm motivated to be in the right frame of mind if I'm going to record. Like, I have to be in the right frame of mind. I have to, like, either be caffeinated or, you know, I have to, <laughs> it has to be shortly after I've smoked the good stuff. And it's always ever just sativa. In case it wasn't clear, right? I don't do any of this indica shit. If I did this indica shit, then I, I wouldn't be as energetic as I am. The reason I'm as energetic as I am in these and as, as <laughs> kind of overly fast paced in, in, you know, certain audios in my speech is because it's, it's, it's all sativa. It's never indica. So I'm, <laughs> I'm turbocharged. <laughs> Hold on one sec. Destiny on Chase Geyser. I'll let you know Chase. Oh yeah. Of Infowars fame. I Geyser? saw the Infowars too, so I know that he's like an actual fucking retard as well. Oh, is he ever? Wait, 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 is everyone a retard because they don't know it? But it just so happens that yeah, Chase Geyser is the stupidest person. For more on this, listen to Knowledge Fight, People the are... podcast. Right, Infowars are all retards. Yes. Like, if that guy would have been in the audience, like, the bullet would have went one in hole and out the other, and there would have been no damage done. That's how stupid anybody that works at InfoWars is. Yes. Okay. I disagree with that assessment. But I'm sure you do. Boo, Destiny, boo. Sharika Soul has her hand up. Sharika, you can un unmute yourself. Destiny, I just have to say that you are an adult male. 
And the way that you're talking to some of the women in here, well, Kat specifically, is actually really disheartening to listen to. Also, I, I particularly am struck by a destiny. Well, I am black. And I'm kind of tired of white liberals denying the violence in the black community and using Black Lives Matter, specifically protests, who, by the way, black, the black neighborhoods that have the protest, they end up being destroyed and trashed. And it's not you that comes to the neighborhoods and helps clean up those neighborhoods after a protest. So for you to speak on Black Lives Matter protests and say they're not violent or whatever you were trying to say is disrespectful, it's disingenuous, especially to black women who have to live in those neighborhoods and the black children. Now you all heard how he phrased that. That was a deliberate, fuck you, that was a deliberate, oh yeah, yeah, We're, but he was doing it self-consciously. He's been outspoken against the BLM, but this is the caliber of brain out there. Like she couldn't get it that he was just doing the duck man, oh yeah, yeah, she thought he literally tried to whitewash the BLM bat parts. Uh, thank you as a black woman for showing up to show that retardation can transcend both gender and race. I'm not uh, retarded. You're uh, the black yeah. man. I don't know why the f what do you think I'm speaking out for BLM. This conversation is about BLM. I don't know why the f why don't we know who they're talking to right now. It was that brief encounter from some time before where you just said, well, you guys ain't going to fest to anything in Gen 6. I'm not going to fest to anything in BLM. But you were doing it self-knowingly. Okay. I can cuss whatever I want. What do you mean? I can say whatever the fuck I want. It's freedom of speech. Because it's disrespectful. Disrespectful to what? This is my, this is, this is in your Twitter space. You're not here to tell me what I can say or not. It's why we're online. It's frank speech. You know, if there's something to disrespect, it's better to know. If there's something about you that ought to be disrespected, it's good for you to know it. Because you're being disrespected by the best. <laughs> Currently the best in the biz. I'm sorry to say. You know what? In terms of him knowing his legal stuff, him having read all these drudgery, you know, legal documents and stuff, this is the best man in the biz. <laughs> the best man child in the biz. I could go BLM, BLM, BLM. BLM, 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 BLM. BLM, black people need me. I, I'm going to be the white savior for BLM. I love BLM. I'm the leader of BLM. I'm the self appointed leader of BLM. Oh, yes, I love BLM. Oh, yes, Black Panthers. I'm going to join right now. Oh, BLM, BLM, BLM. Keep it real. I am keeping it real. Black men are violent towards black women, and we don't need people like you constantly using us for political. Oh, gal, you got to listen to Black Mind. Talking points. Mind your own business and quit talking about a race that you don't know nothing about. It was woven because of the the, the cat side. Are you law? He he did. Destiny didn't weave it in. Destiny was on the defense on that. Are you lost right now? How did you even wander in here? Are you okay right now? Uh, distress and you need to get on medication. Stop okay. talking to women crazy. Okay. You only talk like that because you're behind a screen. If you were there and she had a whole bunch of men standing by her, there's no way you would keep talking to her like that. So physical intimidation is good? You're a punk. Okay. Bro you know, if I were there and I had a bunch of men with me and they were on my side, then you'd be scared. Thank you. <laughs> but I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want you to be physically intimidated by any of us. Okay. Thank you. So, like, why do you want Destiny to be intimidated physically by, like, a bunch of men in his proximity? What's wrong with you? So much for your valuable contribution. Okay. Physical intimidation is always bad. Noted. Okay. Um... <laughs> Let's try to keep it civil, guys. Let's just try to... God, the, the righteousness. ...with each other, but not talking over each other. It's hard to hear. Now, this is why Ezra's show is so confirmatory. <laughs> it's confirmed so much of what I believe. Especially when he plays from... This is from 2012, but he's played much older convention stuff. But this is Romney 2012. He's got a ex-Romney guy on the show as the guest. This This just confirms so much of what I found inconsistent about the party that throughout the generations, the different generations aren't at each other's throats, but it's the makers versus the takers and how incompatible that is with this generic Americana stuff, America first. And let's forget, you know, about relative comparative advantage. Warren Cass, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So we're here talking on the cusp of the 2024 Republican National Convention, but I wanted to play you a clip from the- Man, Ezra just sandwiches him right off the bat. No, you know, introduce yourself, say a few things. No, no, just Ezra goes for the clip. 2012 Republican National Convention when Mitt Romney received the nomination. Man, Ezra did him dirty. And Ezra... I wanted to hear how you hear this now. 
<laughs> you think they discussed it beforehand? I mean, I think he's going to be taken aback because this is Romney. This is Romney makers and takers. And, you know, it's all about the freedom to fail and blah, 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 which is good. You know, it's fine. To some extent, you know, the makers should have more than the takers. They shouldn't have it all, but they should have more. And that's far more important than whether, you know, Americana does the whole it's mine thing. <laughs> In America, we celebrate success. We don't apologize for success. Well, you should at least apologize for the nepotism, but fine, meritocratic success, no one should apologize for that. They should just accept, you know, it's, 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 it was necessitated. It's, it's what to our psychologies, if our, if our psychologies are going to be honest about it, psychologically, we can understand it's luck, but it's necessitated. Romney was loved at the conventions. He was loved at the now, conventions. We always successful at Maine, but no one ever is in the real world of business. That's what this president doesn't seem to understand. Business and growing jobs is about taking risk, sometimes failing, sometimes succeeding, but always striving. And sometimes having, you know, your fam that you can just ask more money from. Driving. It's about dreams. Usually it doesn't and others who don't take the risks and then just sink extra hard <laughs> work out exactly as you might have imagined See, I don't think Romney sunk extra hard when he failed at Bain. He didn't sink extra hard But he's encouraging something that okay it grows the pie faster But like the people who don't have a fam to fall back on who strive he's gonna say we ought to strive It's like they ought to have some kind of state provided backed cushion if they're gonna be encouraged whether or not they have daddy bank to fall back on, if they're going to be encouraged to take their own ingenuity and build it and build the economy that way, then, you know, fuck you. You had daddy bank to fall back on. Some people don't. Encourage the striving, if you must, to grow the pie. Because, you know, <laughs> Jim needs more luxury. Uh, but then, you know, have, have a state fault, you know, have a state service. End up so that, that that guy doesn't sink extra hard. But no, you don't want to do that either. You're a dick. Steve Jobs, a vulture dick, was fired at Apple, and then he came back and changed the world. Yeah, but he wasn't homeless along the way. It's the genius of the American free enterprise system. To... It's not uniquely American. If you want to say it's uniquely anything, it's uniquely British. Harness the extraordinary creativity and talent and industry. You guys just like took all the rhetoric and ran with it, but it's like it's uniquely British, assholes. Of the American people with a system that's dedicated to creating tomorrow's prosperity, not trying to. Or just, you know, growing the pie ever more at the expense of things like justice. I mean, here, just procedural justice, right? You know, legal justice in many cases. Yeah, you grow the pie. The meritocratically successful have nothing to apologize for. They keep what's theirs. They grow the economy ever further, henceforth. But, you know, some of them are guilty just in legal matters. But they buy, they buy better legal defense. And they get off scot-free. Because they simply had the means to buy better legal defense. There's no capitalistic hand-waving of that. That's just a cost. It doesn't have to sink the whole project. But, you know, maybe in some cases, oh, we don't have to grow the pie. We don't have to maximize it. We can just grow it, you know, at the pace that kind of Europe grows it. And then we can have less, you know, scummy legal um, get-out-of-jail-free cards for the rich simply because they can afford better uh, attorneys. But Romney wouldn't mention any of that here because it's a convention. You were Mitt Romney's domestic policy advisor on that campaign. What do you think of that political message wow, now? Wow, Ezra. Well, let me say, first of all, I'm, I'm relieved. I thought you were going to play the bit with Clint Eastwood in the chair. So <laughs> <laughs> I was there for that. That was one of the most surreal moments. I just never know, you know, when, when it comes to Ezra bringing on one of these, you know, he he's hosted people who have called Donald Trump a fascist and everything in the book. And, you know, he hasn't really given many of them much pushback. But then it's like now the guy's tied up with Trump. It's like interesting. I. Are, are these, you know, collegial chuckles? Is it something more? Is, it, is there enmity here? <laughs> it's in my political life. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, we've, we've only moved to the more surreal from there. And very... Like, if you think the guy's a fascist, like Ezra's just talking to someone, 
you know, whom I'm sure many of his listeners th is thinking that he wants the fascists to win. How do you keep this nice and clean? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't believe, I wouldn't use the word fascist, ultranationalist, certainly. But, you know, enough for me to just kind of, you know, not chuckle along with him. I wouldn't mistreat anyone simply on account of the fact that they would vote for an ultranationalist I have profound differences with. But, you know, like, if I thought they were fascists, like, I, I'd be even worse to them. I'm, I'm pretty mean to them, mo mostly to their intelligence. Respect, but it is a fascinating clip. And one of the things that strikes me most about it is... Yeah, there's an inconsistency between makers and takers, you know, and makers keep theirs, and America first. And let's, let's ignore that there's this thing called comparative advantage and that... You know, especially our allies. If our allies grow faster than us, like, that's not a problem for us, as long as it's our allies. Because, you know, we're growing too. <laughs> we're, we're interlinked and growing. It's almost drowned out in the applause, but what he describes as sort of... But now it's like every single penny ought to go to American interests. The secret of the free enterprise system is harnessing the... I don't remember the exact adjectives, ingenuity and... And, you know, let's use the word working class as well, us Trumpies. Let's use the word working class a lot instead of just, you know, like, are you just talking about blue collar workers? Like, and then why? Like, why, why MAGA? Why don't you afford white collar workers uh, a seat at the working class table? What's wrong with white collar workers, MAGA? Are you guys resent intelligence? Productivity and so... Me thinks a lot of you resent intelligence. That's why you treat destiny horribly. Or it the American... You know, like the chud and the high school dweeb. That's like what MAGA wants to enact on the internet between them and destiny. People... Me, me thinks you guys... Me thinks you guys despise intelligence. To build these successful enterprises. But yes, it's about the working and... class. No, it's just blue collar. You guys just think blue collar deserves a halo. I say fuck that. I, I say fuck that with Bernie, and I say fuck that with you lot. That remains exactly correct. I think what was so often missing. I think you guys see a future for which you're ill-fitted for. Thing in the Republican Party. And I'm, I'm sitting here saying UBI, and you're like hissing at me for saying UBI. But it's a future you guys are going to be more ill-fitted for. You guys need UBI, and it's the furthest thing from your mind, you crazy magas including in the message as often presented in the Romney Ryan campaign, was recognizing that we had moved away from that system, that yeah. if you ask who was being most successful in the American economy, whether whether you're talking about Steve Jobs at, at Apple or the folks running Bain Capital, it was not achieving success by harnessing the, the power of the American worker. It was achieving success by avoiding the American worker. Boom! One thing that strikes me about that clip where they were, they were nonetheless successful clip and Republican Party rhetoric from that period is that it is pitched at Obama bad somebody specific. The sense was that, that we had come to talk down the entrepreneurs, the risk takers, the corporate executives. And now when I listen... And, and Jim is especially offended by that because Jim needs... Jim doesn't need, but Jim wants more luxury. ...to a lot of Republicans, and I don't think their policy always backs us up, but when I listen to them and when I listen to you, there's been an implicit shift, at least rhetorically, in who is the, the Vox Populi, who is the, <laughs> the political ideal voice. That's definitely true. I think it, it, and it, it is true both in, in a sort of political understanding. Well, it's my first listen. I'm going to resume it. But yeah, that's the podcast. I'm sure it's going to be great. It was Jim. Okay, so there's the China factor. Yeah, I got to jump back in for one thing. You know, he said his magical thinking. Adam Smith's hand is magical thinking. He actually says it. But you know, the one factor that changed a lot of people's minds is the China factor. That's kind of what he covered. But now he's going to launch into Adam Smith. But that was seen as a, a sort of, you know, weird one-off exception. And the basic assumption was still, you know, the understanding of the invisible. That being the China factor is a one-off exception. And as people thought Adam Smith spoke of... Mighty big exception, though, right? The invisible hand, which was that there is some miraculous force out there that... In uh, just maybe a just world force. We don't even know about it, but we kind of intuit it. There's a just world force... As long as it's voluntary, things will come out good, you know, but 
you know, if we have a bunch of like abandoned buildings that we never make use of, but it's private property, but it's run down and abandoned slum, but it's nonetheless private property because some, you know, investor bought up everything. And, you know, some people want to sleep there. They're, they're trespassers. And so we're going to, well, we're not going to initiate force against them. They're still initiating force by trespassing and, you know, trying to sleep on abandoned private property. So they're the initiators of force and we're just using retaliatory force. There. The theory says so. So it must be true. Ensures that when everyone is left to pursue their own profit, voluntarily, the public benefits as well. You know, the rising tide lifts all ships. So yeah, but I mean, come on, the pre globalization world versus the now world. I'd rather live in the now than the pre, just if we're talking material worries. I'd rather live in the now, the post globalization world. Well, I don't know. Are we going to get out? I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to get out of economic globalization. I don't care how many blue collar suckers you, you know, get rowdy and get gain some kind of party momentum. We're not going to, globalization will not be curbed. And, and look at the world before. I'd rather live in the now. That is something I think, you know, certainly I, to a significant extent, took for granted and just proved as an empirical matter not not to be the case. We have I think you can only say that if you just oversimp for the blue collar workers, because, yeah, in, in a few of their cases, Mm, even there, it's it's a very complex story, whether they on net just by profession, if there's any professions that just by net in the West or just in America, specifically professions that lost out, you know, who's whatever, um, accredited members lost out as individuals economically, even though they may have gained as consumers, they nonetheless lost out by profession, these blue collar professions. And that's what like, that's, that's why this guy kind of changed teams. But it's just, it could just be a few policies there or just a lack of lobbying on their part, but really a few policies. Like you ought to read Dean Baker, buddy. You ought to read Dean Baker on IP law, Reagan's fault, made longer and stronger. All these medicines, you know, patents on medicines, longer and stronger, benefited doctors and the pharmaceutical industries and all that stuff. Um, I guess in that case, I can't find a profession that was victimized by it. Maybe you guys can help me out. But you know, just the consumers of medicine. There are consumers of medicine. Progs would even say it's disgusting to put it that way. But we know in a competitive, open, free society, medicine is something you consume. So the consumers of medicine lost out because Reagan signed a bunch of um, insanely generous IP and patent laws in 1981. I did a great video on it, reading out Dean Baker's paper. But yeah, this guy is like, let's just simp for like blue collar as a general thing. And I'm like, what? That's stupid. Now had decades for which that did not happen. And so I, I think the shift certainly that, that. No, no, most people are better off. <laughs> are you better off? Most people are better off. It's just, yeah, a few professions and I guess consumer types, like medicine consumer types, these sickly people. You know, there's these sickly people who have to pay a lot more for their, you know, meds. So yeah, those are the losers, but not everyone is a loser, though everyone might be a sucker. <laughs> that has occurred in my own thinking, and, and I think you're right, that is, is driving a lot of what's going on within conservatism. Is Ultra-nationalism and ultra-protectionism is not going to make it better, bud. Quit playing for the wrong team. Recognition that the ends that we're actually focused on, which you might kind of... God, Vance is such a bitch. I love my short post on the pic. Yeah, Trump wanted a bitch. He's got one in Vance. Former never Trumper, I say. What did I say? I write, it's his favorite psychosocial food. Is these erstwhile never Trumpers. How he can squeeze their balls. Broadly described. Probably literally behind the scenes. I didn't, I mean, you Just know. Vance, drop him. Drop him, Vance. I want to squeeze. And you can't squeal. The moment you squeal, I'm swapping you back for Pence. Pence would probably do it. Vague term like human. If Pence was that, how many of you actually think if Pence was asked, Pence would say, no, I have principles. No, Pence would let his balls get squeezed. Vance would let his balls get squeezed. It just doesn't matter. Flourishing. Especially post-assassination attempt. Has a bunch of specific elements within it. And high material living standards is one of them. But strong, stable communities, family Comunita. formation, the ability of people to build decent lives. Hey, you want to debate be getting with me, buddy? You just assume family formation is a good thing. You're assuming that, you know, communities are good things, right? You know, 
let's have ever more emotional bonds that we're not in control of fully, that we're only at best 50% in control of, you know, let's just, you know, uh, more community time is just more say nice things instead of true things time, right? The, the more hostility there is, the less communal vibes there'll be. But what, what if it's just the case that like, I just have nothing but criticisms and harsh criticisms for people? You know, why are you assuming someone like me ought to be in a community? Why are you assuming someone like me ought to start a family? Why don't you think a little deeper? Why don't you come on and we'll debate begetting? Lives typically in the communities where they lived, where their families have lived to, to raise children, to be productive contributors to their communities. Yeah, but not to be wise people with self-growth or any of that. No, just to contribute to communitach be a paper boy at 12. But that's really what <laughs> gets you gets you nice and ready to wake up super not just insanely early for a school day but no even fucking earlier wake up at 5 a.m. to be a paper boy to serve your cool muni talk. Fuck off. Goal is supposed to be and that we're actually allowed to assert that those things are goals. No, you let your children roam. Hopefully they have friends so you let them roam as friends when they're you know Hell, even if they're 18 and still just want to, high school's over and all they want to do is roam with their friends. Yeah, you fucking let them. Let them have a good time. Instead of just... No, say, instead be communal servants. Be productive communal servants. Yeah, I wasn't born to be a productive communal servant. I wasn't born to serve the Volk. I was born to have a good time. Dang. Well, whatever. And, and to figure out that it, it was really stupid of my parents to birth me, to beget me. Liberty in the market. Born to figure out it was a problem being born. Produce is the end unto itself. Senator Rubio has a very good line about this, that the market or, or the economy is supposed to be serving people, not people serving the economy. That Yeah, but people are the economy, so it's like people serving people. So it's really just, you know, it's just stupid word games, you know. What did the uh, Friedmanites always say? The, the market just is the people. <laughs> the freer the people, the freer the market. It's synonymous. The freer the people, the freer the market, the freer the market, the freer the people. So they would accuse you guys of playing word games. And you'd probably just accuse them of playing word games because like, well, the whole economic beef thing is really stupid. That is then not only our right, but in our sense, our, our duty to think about how we want to govern. And Ezra. You can do so much better with your time. And to, to proactively govern. But you have party ends. To ensure that. <laughs> and you're bound by the New York Times. The market is generating the kinds of outcomes we care most about, even if those aren't. Family friendly outcomes. The ones that would kind of get an A on the exam as, as if. Right, you assholes are why I couldn't freaking watch Duckman before 1 a.m. Well, let me try to understand. But you love freedom. Why this felt so earth shaking to you? Because I'm, I'm more. Okay, I don't know much about this guy, but probably you know Vance, Vance's community and household and all that. So these are, these are the very people who probably stood up and applauded when, you know, Bush Senior said the average family should be more like the Waltons and less like the Simpsons. The brawl. Yeah, these are the kinds of people for whom the Simpsons was too much in 1991. I would describe the dominant view among liberals in this era. Uh, Ezra, but you're not going to say any of this fun stuff. You're just going to say like some other kind of wonky stuff. As pro-free trade, but, but quite aware that you had markets that were poorly structured. Yeah, you know, the limp-wristed protectionists. The libs were these limp-wristed protectionists. You had people, a, a huge shift. And in... proponents of social welfare. Why social, though? Why not just call it economic welfare? <laughs> social welfare. Income to capital. Away like social welfare just means like, you know, befriending people out of pity. That's so that's being a social welfare is befriending these low. There's these lonely people. Oh, everyone's. Did you know the most popular kid in the class is also lonely? Yeah, there's it's the omni loneliness. And so social welfare would be befriending people out of pity from labor and that that, that income should be redistributed. Ah, uh, this balance stuff between their dry econ stuff and my kind of social wildcat stuff is, uh, it's enough. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. I won't interject anymore. Hi, Mr. Nelson. Hi, little Billy. Okay, car fed, watch how it's done. You got to deal with these middle class fleet of the burbs can't stand a little crime in the big bad city fringe dwellers on their own level. One of the great writers about um, Henry George in the 19th century that said that the theory of protectionism teaches us to do to ourselves in peace what our enemies try to do to us in war. <laughs>
right? When, you know, when your enemies, they, they blockade your harbors, they interfere with the flow of goods and services. That's an act of aggression, and it makes you poorer, and your enemies understand that. And then people say, well, why don't we, if we do it to ourselves, maybe the result will be, the, will be different. No, the result... And they're not just milk toast protectionists, they're ultra protectionists. The Vancy. It will be the same. So um, we have to keep pressing for a world that trades in freedom and understand that China raises special problems, but we need to keep the China exception in mind that trade, collective security, that's normal. The, pro the question of how to make sure that China stays on a good path and not like not prematurely to hasten the conflict with China if we can avoid it. But you know, this article on the descent, the age of conformity, cannot recommend it enough. I flashed to some brilliance of it, you know, when I was talking about my, hang on, what am I doing here? When I was talking about my wanting freedom from work. Yeah, this time I made it about, you know, envying the Bohemians. Last year I envied the cynics, the ancient cynics. Then I'm like, oh, I can't do that, that's too much. But you know, Bohemia, you know, they straddled the line to some extent, you know, they could still, if anything else, they could still afford to live in the cities. But Bohemia, said forward, was the fatherland of my breed. If so, his breed, at least in America, is becoming extinct. This is, this is early 50s. <laughs> the stuff that I needed it was going extinct fast in the early 50s and never arose again to prominence. Volk saw fit to fixate on the economic chart and get excited that, you know, ooh, 96% of the people who are employable are working 40 hours a week. Ooh, that's the perfect number. You know, if it goes from 96 to 95, you ought to get a little worried. It's only 95% of the employable who are working. You know, ideal unemployment, you know, 4%, stupid economic crap, people believe it. But no, this is, this is the real deal. His breed in America is becoming extinct. The most exciting periods of American intellectual life tend to coincide with the rise of Bohemia, with a tragic yet liberating rhythm of the break from the small town into the literary roominess of the city, well, the city nowadays is every bit as dull as the town. Or from the provincial immigrant family, yeah, let's praise the immigrant, you know, hardworking ants, into the centers of intellectual experiment. Given the nature of contemporary life, Bohemia flourishes in the city, but that has not always been so. Now, I just read the whole damn article. It's, it's where I kind of grew my uh, last bit of inspiration. I want to do a bit more, but I'm going to have it be AI because I'm just too tired to read myself, so it's AI time. Bohemia flourishes in the city, but that has not always been so. Concord too was a kind of Bohemia, sedate, subversive, and transcendental all at once. Today, however, the idea of Bohemia, which was a strategy for bringing artists and writers together in their struggle with and for the world, this idea has become disreputable, being rather nastily associated with kinds of exhibitionism that have only an incidental relationship to Bohemia. Yeah, it's people who don't want to go to work. Bohemia. Nonetheless, it is the disintegration of Bohemia that is a major cause for the way intellectuals feel, as distinct from and far more important than what they say or think. No, they should want to contribute and go to work. Think. Must have 96% employment, anything else is suboptimal. Think. Don't think. Those feelings of loneliness one finds among so many American intellectuals, feelings of damp, dispirited isolation which undercut the ideology of liberal optimism, are partly due to the breakup of Bohemia. Yeah, two types of classical righteous libs, the theoretical libs, two types of those. Those who understand we need Bohemia and those who just can't think beyond the stupid economic data. You know, mustn't deviate from the economic data. If economic data doesn't show this, then, you know, this can't be, you know, the lack of this can't be a problem for anyone. No, it's, it's a problem for many people. It's just, you know, no one covers our, you know, our views. We're just, you know, oddly displaced from the press. Bohe and kind of algorithmically demoted. Bohemia. No Bohemia. Where young writers would once face the world together, they now... No, classical righteous lips who, you know, don't try to ingratiate themselves to the Volk, and classical righteous lips who do. Right? So whether you're a classical righteous lip doesn't matter as much as whether you try to ingratiate yourself to the Volk. Sink into suburbs, country homes, and college towns. And the price they pay for this hang rise on, in social on. status is I'm to be made I'm disrupting too income. much. I'm disrupting too much. Where young writers would once face the world together, they now sink into suburbs, country homes, and college towns. And the price they pay for this rise in social status is to be made assured in more than an increase in rent. It is not my purpose to berate anyone, for the pressures of conformism are at work upon all of us, to say nothing of the need to earn one's bread, and all of us bend under the terrible weight of our time, though some take pleasure in learning to enjoy it. 
nor do I wish to indulge in the sort of good-natured condescension with which Malcolm Cowley recently described the younger writers as lugubrious and timid longhairs huddling in chill academies and poring over the Gnostic texts of Henry James, by contrast, no doubt, to Cowley's own career of risk-taking. Some intellectuals, to be sure, have sold out, and we can all point to examples, probably the same examples. Hegel and his ink scribblers, a shop put it. God, this has... I finally realized why I like it. It's got the prose of shop. It's got the take no prisoners prose of shop. Examples, but far more prevalent and far more insidious, is that slow attrition which destroys one's ability to stand firm and alone. Damn the strange. temptations of an improved standard of living combined with guilt over the historical tragedy that has made possible our prosperity. One sense of being swamped by the rubbish of a reactionary period together with the loss of those earlier certainties that had the advantage, at least, of making resistance easy. God, the more things change. <laughs> easy. Nor in saying these things, do I look forward what to- What does Shop say in the chapter of history? Yeah, history always shows the same thing in different guises. Forward to any sort of material or intellectual asceticism. Our world is to be neither flatly accepted nor rejected. It must be engaged, resisted, and, who knows, perhaps still, transformed. Okay, so that part is very much incompatible to Shop, but the prose is still good. But, you know, Shop says this must be rejected. You must deny the will. Right? You do not beget, not just because, you know, who's going to create a casualty of nature. No, no, you don't beget because by begetting, you're asserting the will. You're supposed to deny the will. We're supposed to turn away the will if we're paying attention to what it is. Transformed. So this is not very shop-like, but still the prose is good. Transformed. All of life, my older friends often tell me, is a conspiracy against that ideal of independence with which a young intellectual begins. Mm. But if so, wisdom consists not in premature surrender, but in learning when to evade, when to stave off and when to oppose head-on. Conformity, as Arthur Kessler said some years ago, is often a form of betrayal which can be carried out with a clear conscience. Mm. Gradually we make our peace with the world, and not by anything as exciting as a secret pact. Nowadays Lucifer is a very patient and reasonable fellow with a gift for indulging one's most legitimate desires, and we learn, if we learn anything at all, that betrayal may consist in a chain of small compromises, even while we also learn that in this age one cannot survive without compromise. Yeah, it's just, this is where the dividing lines, at least on the internet, should be. Those are all for compromise, you know, whatever, so they can attain to glory in their clan or so they can make a lot of money. But it's all, you know, you know, let's not pay attention to the fact that there ain't no bohemia no more. Compromise. What is most alarming is not that a number of intellectuals have abandoned the posture of iconoclasm. Let the zeitgeist give them a jog and they will again be radical, all too radical. What is most alarming is that the whole idea of the intellectual vocation the idea of a life dedicated to values that cannot possibly be realized by a commercial civilization has gradually lost its allure. And it is this, rather than the abandonment of a particular program, which constitutes our route. Yeah, and this was all before the internet and audience capture. And he got it. Route. In a recent number of perspectives, Lionel Trilling addressed himself to some of these problems. His perspective is sharply different from mine. Trilling believes that there is an unmistakable improvement in the American cultural situation of today over that of, say, 30 years ago. Yeah, uh, same thing, different guises. Ago, while to me it seems that any comparison between the buoyant, free-spirited cultural life of 1923 with the dreariness of 1950... Yeah, it was just a lot of flings and STDs, though. 1953, or between their literary achievements, must lead to the conclusion that Trilling is indulging in a pleasant fantasy. You know, and, and with it, you know, begetting, and not the best, you know, not the best did the beginning and the conceiving. But anyway, so like the, the article is 90% agreeable, but yeah, I can't make this long. So it's just, yeah, go, go read the whole thing. Read the, or have AI read it for you. Because yeah, AI is awesome in some cases. In other cases, it may be the ultimate downfall, but uh, we need a downfall. Well, this wasn't even about him so much. Back to Shmuley. Apparently, I just can't quit Shmuley either. This was called Poor Kid, but I almost, I was this close to calling it, are you ready for this? I was, I almost, but I decided not because I decided to be tasteful. And it's true, you know, Poor Kid, it's absolutely true, but the old title would have been true too. The old title was supposed to be, it almost was, but then I said no. Money ain't everything, but I didn't because I didn't want it to be perceived as anti-Semitic because anti-Semitism is stupid. And I'm not stupid, but it would have been a good title for the segment, right? Because it's likewise true, right? It's a poor kid, but likewise, money ain't everything.
but people would have said it's anti-Semitic. No one would have thought it's anti-Semitic, but you know, just on a chance that the video went viral or something, then you know, a lot, a lot of people would have said it's anti-Semitic and it would have gotten flagged down. But you know, I don't like misconceptions and anti-Semitism is stupid, so I didn't title it that way. But you know, it could be said, money ain't everything. Her beautiful, beautiful daughter has been taken in the most horrific, shocking manner. But she has to, she feels in the middle of all of that grief, unimaginable tragedy, she has to go onto social media to talk to a group of... It's just the internet. Rioting EDL marchers. I'm still trying to make that happen. I'm trying to make stop saying social media happen. It's, it's not going to happen. Yeah, to start this. To say, this is the only thing that I will write. But please, please stop the violence in Southport tonight. The police have been nothing but heroic these last 24 hours, and they and we don't need this. From Jeff Yeah, it's one of the bereaving, bereaved mothers. I mean, come on. I'm sure that's enough to make the cooler heads prevail from here on out, right? If it's the mother. Any symptom. Those people should be ashamed of themselves that they have forced a grieving mother to go on to... Not they, to, to, to and unsuccessfully. Holy shit. If this, isn't worth it. Well, that's true, but if this were 2014, hang on. If this it were 2014, worth it. I would have definitely called this guy. It was. I think you know who I'm talking about. He's too old now and he's been too, you know, out of my mind to think of the joke at the time, but I would have gone. Like, if this were 2014, I would have gone. Holy shit, Pat Condell's among the crowd. Pat Condell's among the nativists. Well, we do know Pat Condell's among the nativists, but like physically speaking in the... In meat space, Pat Gondell's among the nativists. But it's not him. But, you know, it could have just as easily been him. It's just he's too old nowadays. Predictably, decade after decade. And, like, when they have the internet, like, they can communicate easier. And, you know, it's not good for, you know, the battle against anti-Semitism. <laughs> just one more addition to this. It's not good. Mass immigration is not good if you want to battle anti-Semitism. And, you know, organized. You know, mass immigration in the long haul, in terms of, like, a lot of these people believing in crazy, wacky things. But it's like, but then those crazy, wacky things typically are premised on anti-Semitism. So if you're pro-Semitic, you should discourage mass immigration and do what I say here. This kind of stuff. I guess I'm done. It's just not a good scene. Yeah, it's just not a good scene. And, and especially if you want to battle anti-Semitism, it's not a good scene. Yeah, I'm on your show, I'm a guest. Ew, I'm ew. not answering. Let me get Yay. to I'm pointing out that it's not two sides. What Donald Trump has said, I want your view. The more Destiny Spurgs out about Trump, the more I want to vote for him, LOL. Yeah, of course, because the only reason you're voting for Donald Trump is as a reaction to other people. You have no original thoughts, you have no policy positions, and you don't support him for any legitimate reason. You only do it because you think it's epic and based pilled. That's it. That's the only reason. You never have to say that. We all know that. Every reasonable person in society is looking at you and they know that, yeah, why would you say, I'm voting for Trump because I'm retarded, and there are retarded reasons that make me want to vote for Trump even more? We know. We all know. <laughs> Everybody knows, my dude. You're, you're not surprising anybody with that comment. Yeah, they stay 18 all their life long, ideologically, but they exhibit maturity in all other kinds of ways that the Vol can pick up on. But ideologically, they stay 18 all their life long. You just need to hear this because you're not telling them this. And yeah, these guys Trump all suck. His entire... These guys all suck. It's all about destiny. <laughs> You need to say this to every single f***ing person that talks to you about this, okay? No, I don't. I can just play you saying it. When Republicans get accused of wrongdoing, it's always the same playbook. Do you say it with more intensity because you seem to care more. Donald Trump said, I need criminal immunity. Right. Alex Jones said, yep. I had a psychosis. I didn't mean any of it. Fox News right. said, oh, we don't want to say anything. We're just going to settle. We understand. We f***ed up completely. Uh, and um, A lot of ass covering in Red America, a lot more. When it comes to legal consequences, ooh, no comparison. And, uh, oh, what was the last thing? Oh, and uh, for Ruby Freeman, Giuliani said, excuse me, I did lie, but it's my First Amendment right to lie, right? right. People need to know this, okay? It's not the same on both sides. Both sides did not do these, right? The Republican playbook is insane. It's unhinged. That was- And Rudy's a cousin fucker. That was Rudy Giuliani's defense. He said, I lied, but that's my First Amendment right to lie. And, and that's really bad, but it's even worse that he's a cousin fucker. And then he right. lost that- Or a cousin wetter, but then how do they wed and not fuck? Case for $148 million. Like, it's insane. <laughs> Yeah, and then the, and then he tried to declare bankruptcy, and the the judge threw it out too. There's a there's a because they lied about his assets. He tried to do a chapter eleven, right, so he could restructure. Then he tried to convert it to a chapter seven, so that he could wipe away all his debt and just hold on to a couple assets. But then he lied about money that he was making in other businesses. Giuliani, he's crooks.
I mean, yeah, if you're going to be a crook, then you should at least, like, go through with it the whole way and not just cave because there's legal con. Like, if you're going to be a crook, then you should be willing to go to jail when there's no other avenue, but not fast to the fact that, oh, yeah, I'm a crook. But they want to be both crooks and they want to skirt the legal consequences for it. It doesn't work that way, Donnie. Um, I know it's kind of early to call that for sure. Holy and a lot of the shit. evidence that I would provide for that would be, you know, past evidence of her electoral uh, performance and then kind of like just the general malaise around her candidacy. I don't see. I haven't seen Paul's ego in at least a decade. As huge of an announcement. You're looking rough, Paul. Um. Oh, yeah. Extra, extra. Nimrod steps down. Gained from you know, the attempted assassination and all of that. I think it's a pretty huge announcement. I think we're done talking about Trump's assassination, and I think this is going to be playing on news networks for the next week. It's, and then it's the first time I've the been in a live stream news for, the next week. for Destiny. Not... It's always ever been the uploads. It's never been the live stream. It says I have to wait. It says I have to wait. How long? 20 minutes or longer can send messages. I have to keep waiting. I, I even subscribe so I can comment. I'm going to be a part of the irreverent chat that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna maybe i'm gonna post a few frogs myself of that but um, yeah, extra extra nimrod steps down definitely don't think that the trump campaign is anywhere it just happened using imagery and yeah using i'm sure they'll try to use imagery and talking points and they'll want to but now this is in the next this is the next part of the media cycle nothing lasts forever it just doesn't the Afghanistan thing didn't last forever. The border stuff, like every single time a new thing pops up in the media, everybody thinks it's going to last for months and it never does. It never has and it never will. It won't. It just, we move on to the next thing. Um, I, right. I, but I mean, we'll see what happens, I guess. But, yeah. yeah. Do you think there's any validity? I mean, like, I understand. Uh, I understand. Like, you know, worry. I, I'm not super worried because like I'm not a DNC guy anyway, but you know, like. I, I understand not giving a fuck, but Paul, what the fuck happened? Did he ever explain it? If he ever explained it, someone just put, like, like, I understand not giving a fuck, but holy shit. About what? Like worries about Kamala being uh, pretty much non- You're not going to be alive for much longer if you keep at it. She's younger. She's got some, well, no, she's got a lot of experience in the past, not being president. She was a VP. She's got the support of the DNC and all of this. And she cackles, as we all learned. All the Trump hatred. I mean, who knows? I, I, I mean... It, uh, it's better when I can pause them. Biden was going to drop out. Like I said as much. I, I mean, everybody knows this. If Biden was going to drop out, it almost certainly has to pass to Kamala Harris. Um, mm -hmm. And then we just have to see who our VP pick is. And then... Is that just... No, a, it should uh, be an open primary, guys. It should be an open yeah, know, battleground. Sure they got to duke it out. Like they got to duke it out. What's... How has this already been decided? I thought it wasn't... In your party as well, right? Like... like we had Biden. Come Biden's on, but Kamala cackles. Maybe that's going to hurt her more than Newsom. I say, also, fuck the vice president. Okay, Kamala is clearly not. Boom, we're going to go do an open convention. You're snubbing her very, very, very hard there. Um, oh, right. give me a break, yeah. Destiny. So there's a logistics element to it. There's probably Oh, Destiny, there's differences between us yet. Moral, maybe like branding or something. There's some other word I'm looking there uh, for, but yeah. Why does she have to be so ambitious? She was VP out of nowhere. You know, she was just this... You know, truancy. Oh, I'm going to enforce the truancy laws, you fucking bitch. I shouldn't have had truancy laws imposing my kind of guilt and tugging at my guilt. But yeah, she enforced a lot of those truancy laws. Fuck you. School ain't for some kids. It's as simple as that. School ain't for some kids. No, no, no. She cackles and she does truancy law. Draconian imposition, you know, sentencing. Fuck her. You know, Newsom. Newsom's my man. Oh, but it's the cities. Well, you know, the cities, the cities is where most people choose to go. So you're going to get the cream of the crop and you're going to get the absolute abomination and the homelessness and stuff like that. Because because you're just you're just going to get a little bit of everything in the cities. Oh, but Gavin Newsom, you know, city, California, but mostly the city failure. It's like the very same people who say people from all over the world choose to come to America. People from all over the world choose to come to America. That proves America is the best country in the world. Because look, people all over, they choose America at much greater rates than any other country. What's the second most country? I don't know. But it feels like it's Canada. <laughs> it feels like it's Canada. It feels like it's the, it's the lower mainland and, and notably my, you know, work to home pipeline but back and forth. It feels like that's like the most, you know, second <laughs> after America chosen place for immigrants. But, you know, those very people, it's like, yeah, yeah, people do choose America. But most of those people who choose America, they choose to live in the cities 
but you're calling the cities these depraved satanic abominations. Like, you guys just can't make any kind of sense. Like, if it proves that by choosing America, most people want to leave their countries, by choosing America, America is the greatest country, then it must mean that the best of America is in the cities, not your stupid, backward, rustic spots. No, but, but, but the cities, because that's where most of those people choose. God, but you guys just can't think coherently of America who might otherwise not hear his message of blue-collar solidarity and Let's see my my, my commentary is better to see his speech I'm not sure oh, oh, okay you didn't talk about it I, I just thought I might have missed you talking about it because the whole like nope, I, parts no idea, of the I, I don't mean to I don't I don't mean to invoke he who shall not be named but Vosh made a whole video about how this dude's like a traitor <laughs> to, because he because he spoke at the RNC which I I found to be pretty retarded but anyway uh yeah I thought you might have had a take on that one more quick question before I go okay um, I saw a clip on your subreddit last night of you kind of freaking out about people that you've worked with being adjacent to like Russia or Ukraine or Moldova, right? Sure. Is there anything like, can you bring me up to speed on that or, uh, uh, like just kind of, or did you do like a highlight video of that yet? Cause I didn't see one. I don't have any hard, this is like all conspiracy in my brain right now. I don't have like any hard evidence on any of it. I just don't like that every single like quote unquote centrist and almost all alternative media, like conservatives all are in lockstep with Russian talking points. That's it does seem that like way, every doesn't single it? Every Russia talking point they're in lockstep with, and every single talking point that they used to talk about politics is to just sow, like, dissent and chaos and destruction in the United States. And all of them are a part of it. Yeah, like, uh, the guy he debated, guess, yeah. the guy he debated pretty much went over how he doesn't trust any of the national-level institutions, you know, the prosecutorial branch, the whatever, all these branches. And it's like, yeah, and so you prove it by not trusting any of those. You want a king! And the guy couldn't accept that he wants a king, but he wants something, right? He's not just all around, you know, this is just, I'm just going to be a pessimist about institutions and things will fail. No, but then he's like, we got to vote Trump. And so it's like destiny proves that he wants a king. The more they talk about how these institutions, whatever, you know, FBI, CIA, executive branch, even when he's not in charge, he's got to be in charge for the executive branch. It's like, they just, they just prove that like they do, they want a king, and a king who feigns being devoutly religious. Probably destructive voices, and then far more critical of like even moderate left voices, and I just don't understand why. Mm. Cha-ching! I see. Yeah, I haven't watched yeah. enough of his stuff to say about yeah, it. It's a cash cow. Yeah, it's a it's cash cow. Uh, ask you about that. I don't want to take up any more of your time, though, buddy. Um, have a good day, and uh, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, I'll find you guys. It's about the Bye. shilling. The retards will back you with their monies. Ooh, ooh, Magus here to save Western civilization from all kinds of threats. No, you're not. You're why we had the Middle Ages. Take a peek at any, well, in keeping with the video, at any twatter space that's a mostly or, or entirely pro-Magus space, and you'll, you'll see why we had the Middle Ages. This is zealots galore. You know, sometimes you see it in the narcissism of their small differences in terms of their zealotry. But this is zealotry galore. And it's all about the faith, and media ignores the faith aspect for the most part because they're very tiptoey and thus disgusting. So there, a one-two punch. Punch the MSN and I punch the MAGAs. It's doable. It's fucking doable in 42 seconds. I didn't intend to. This was just one of those let's this MAGA things. Very short, let's this MAGA things. Let's this MAGA by saying, yeah, you're why we had the Middle Ages. You're no saviors. We need saving for multiple things. If we're going to be melodramatic and use a word like saving, we need it for many things. Among them, I would say MAGA. So I hope they lose. And I do mean they. It's not so much about Trump. It's about the them. They're, they're, what is the track? Voting for Trump thrice. Pops lost his marbles. Many a Pops lost many a marbles. Voting for Trump. You know what is the other thing? Yeah, the the costume thing. I can go. I can start. I can start with the memes, the costume thing. I can tell them literally anything, and I'll still find enough of them who'll suck me off. But yeah, pops lost his marbles. Yes, yes, I'm sure every knee will bow. Rank zealot. That's what she is. If you're not watching, that's what Candace is. Every knee will bow. You're a rank zealot, Candace. Once a rank zealot, always a rank zealot. But the rank is important. But yet, on Twitter, 
it rises to prominence because it's a bunch of rank zealots that go there because they know the other is a rank zealot and so they have a kind of solace to them to their own company but then it it, it makes some of them go next level out of control and so that's that's what happened to poor Candace. So um, I'm not Team Shapiro. I don't even I don't even know why I know of a thing. But but see, I, I go on Twitter and then I know it's a thing. It's knowledge fight. Get it? Play on because they're the reviewers of Infowars. So it's knowledge fight. Um, I got to give it up to Dan. Maybe not so much Jordan, but I got to give it up to Dan of Dan and Jordan fame from the podcast Knowledge Fight. It takes a magnifying glass on InfoWars, but it's really Dan who does all the work, drudges through all the AJ, you know, staleness. Still does it, seven years and counting, still somehow manages to churn these out. It's the best, the highlight, it's not so much the two of them and their opinion, when they get into the weeds of their opinions, it's just because you get the Jones best of clips that I have now set up and will play because it absolutely, some of this must be heard. But yeah, I just kind of got to appreciate Dan for doing all the work because he's got, he listens to it, like literally everything. So he can, you know, <laughs> bring the best up. Right there. It is time. So this is not Alex. This is, what's his name? Jack Posobiec. I said in the video, I don't know Jack Posobiec, but I just don't know what he looks like. I know the name. I just saw him and I didn't look that they flashed on his name. And I'm like, oh, so that's Jack Posobiec. I, I spotted it after. I spotted it after. I just don't know what he looks like. But yeah, this is also Jack Posobiec. With God as our witness to understand that which is truly going on, because we know. So what I just said in terms of um, the Dark Ages, the medievalism, MAGA as medievalism, yeah, this is, I mean, look no further. I say things and then I just live a little longer, not even like two days longer. I just live a little longer and there's just so much evidence of what I just ranted about. Man who stood on the stage last night, Donald J. Trump. We understand the forces against him. It's not just liberals. It's not just Democrats. It's not just the unhuman communists. Because we understand that this is a war against the demonic. This is a spiritual war. I mean, th this is just like something that needs to be addressed, quite what? frankly. That it's a spiritual war? He, th these people are... Ha they ain't gonna address it, Dan. They're too cowardly because they think that, oh, maybe the people who are, you know, <laughs> spiritual warriors and watch us are gonna take offense. Having a big convention and... As in the MSM won't do it. Yelling that it is a spiritual war and people are cheering. Why? Because they think they're fighting demons. Yeah. And that's because it's Dark Ages 2.0. Become and it's in vogue. Pretty main. And it's not a bipartisan problem. There's very different types of problems in Blue Land, but this is. Whew. Stream on the right way. To ignore this makes you the hackiest of hacks and to just fixate on whatever blue problems. Blue's got problems, fixate on it to some extent, but this this is this is Dark Age medievalism. Sure, sure. But I have never seen believing your political a lot i think you know is it ethical actions right traffic law move people like yeah. peter barn burner yeah it was <laughs> they're, um... they're just they're just filler <laughs> they're just filler <laughs> again i appreciate the podcast because dan does a lot of work to drug up this clips right. so yep. uh Pasobic, uh i think that he wants to uh get people in a, in a call and response kind of mood well, here. That's a good time. But I don't think he just does play the best it, Dan. Job. Just play they it. They are trying to take away our freedoms. They are trying to take away the freedoms of people like Steve Bannon. People like Peter Navarro, who is a political prisoner right now, this very instant. And people like Donald J. Trump, who they want to lock up for 700 years. Are you going to let them lock up Donald Trump? Are you gonna let them turn this movement into political dissidents and political prisoners? Will you stand for a totalitarian regime that takes away our freedoms, that takes away our liberties, that takes away our, ch our children, that takes away our right to worship, that takes away our right to defend ourselves with the Second Amendment? and a regime Ooh. that will take us down. What do you have to say to them? <laughs> Absolutely not. You fucked up the meter. Uh, yeah.
asking him for two and a half hours a few months ago. I said, Elon, should we not call it Team Humanity against Team Satan, against Team New World Order? And he said, yes, let's launch Team Humanity! 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 It's totalitarian, it's anti-human, and we can, and they would be defeated. But if they think they've got a problem with Alex Jones and all the lies and all the disinformation and all They fear Alex Jones because he can read minds and the crowd is so pathetic. The crowd feels flattered secondhand because the guy they root for pretends that he can read others' minds and tells them that he's feared so that they can feel better about themselves. Like, if the guy I'm rooting for is feared, that must mean I'm cool too. The show trials and all the rigging, imagine their horror now when they've got... Twin Godzilla, uh, Donald Trump coming after him, and, and now Elon boom. Musk goes to the world. Derp and derper. Goes to the, Yay, goes to the world government Yay, hack. summit at the WEF last year, and he says, your world government's dead on arrival. It's totalitarian. He said nothing of the sort. He was a shell when he came on there. Very conciliatory tone, just said, maybe we have too much centralization. Maybe we shouldn't put all our eggs in one basket. You know, maybe we ought to do a little more decentralism. How's that? That's all he did. But it wasn't anything like Alex is saying here. It's anti-human, and we're going to have a pro-human future. And when I interview... Humanity's just a group, Alex. You're not supposed to have massive pro-nay takes on groups. It's where discrimination kind of seeps in, is when people insist on finding a group and being really massively pro or nay. Right? But humanity is just, like, what is it? It's just, you gotta think about it. Like, how pro, if you have to be pro or nay the group called humanity, it's just an amalgam of each individual you've dealt with. So how often have you been disappointed by someone versus impressed overall? You add up all their good and bad features, the good and bad attributes. How often have you done the thumbs up overall versus the thumbs down? It seems like you guys bitch about a whole lot of people. Whole culture is decadent, but then, you know, the people are the salt of the earth. But, you know, the, the whole culture is decadent and we got to burn it all down, start over again. It seems that it seems that really when they're in front of crowds, that's when the flattery is amped up. But in many other cases, it's a it's a fallen world. Well, they do have to believe it's a fallen world, but it's, it's just interesting. You know, they can't it's so pro humanity, but it seems that humanity, if you have, just measure it per person, even on their lens, the average person must be underperforming and worse. So yeah, if you, ha if you absolutely have to, if you can't just say, I'm not gonna have any kind of opinion on humanity, it's an abstraction. I shouldn't have opinions on abstractions. I'm just gonna take individuals as they come, right? So how often do you do? You, the viewer, not even Alex, but you, the viewer. How often do you go thumbs up versus thumbs down? Person per person. The more times you go thumbs down, the less of a reason you have to sympathize with this pro-humanity. It's going to be pro -hum Why does it have to be pro-humanity? Any, have any of these people actually asked themselves, have they actually done the count where each person they've known or known of sufficiently such that you feel like you can reach a judgment and then at the end, you know, whatever, for every 99 thumbs down, there's one thumbs up or something of the sort. And so therefore, why the fuck would I be pro-humanity? Right, pro the thing where it's like most most suck, but when we're on stage, we're gonna pretend that no, because it's all about the flattery game, flattery signaling, and the crowd is very much willing to receive the signal. That's why he talks about how you know menacing he is and how when he pretends to read the minds of the globalists, it's like they fear him, they fear him, they fear him, but they've doubled down on their plans, but they fear him. Those stupid numbskulls feel better about themselves when they believe like the guy they sympathize with is being feared. That's how easily impressed they are. Yeah, we're like it just, it's just idiocracy is freaking brain science compared to what, you know, Turning Point USA is. Idiocracy is brain science. Half hours a few months ago, I said, Elon, should we not call it? It just, every single syllable sounds like the sort of thing you would parody, but it's reality. Team humanity against Team Satan, against Team New World Order. And he said, yes, let's launch Team Humanity. Google. Team humanity. Gobble. Team humanity. Gobble. Team humanity. Gobble. Team humanity. One of us. Team One of us. Humanity. Google. Gobble. Uh, my thoughts exactly. It's a fake race war. And the globals are going to try to cause 
Civil unrest, they build a race war, they try to turn it into a civil war, especially once he gets reelected, there'll be 79 days of hell. He will be reelected. They can't stop it. I believe if, if we work hard. It, it's done. If we Wait, show up. If but as soon as he is hmm. president elect, the 79 days between then and January 20th, 2025, they are going to roll out the stops and try to trigger a race war. And that's a total lie and a fraud. And we're all waking up and coming together. But that's why they got movies about civil war and they're hyping it. And all the Democrat Party operatives are claiming there's white militias hiding in the bushes. They're going to come kill people. So we've got to get ahead of that narrative. We have to stop Biden starting World War III as a distraction. They are that desperate because there is a global, worldwide political realignment against the New World Order. The New World Order is a couple thousand arrogant people led by King Charles who sits around and talks about how he wants to depopulate people. And so did his father, Prince Philip. And I'm telling them right now, we are not rolling over and dying for you inbred globalists. You will not divide and conquer us any longer. We want a pro-human free, free. We want a pro-human free. We want a pro-human future. Hey. hey. Google gobble, but Google stumble gobble. Now, remember I brought up Manifest Destiny? Well, I'm going to call this Manifest Destiny Squared or, you know, Manifest Destiny Expansionism, something like that, because it's all over here. Talk about President Trump. He says it all the time. They're not coming after him. They've got to get through him to get to us. And that's totally true. They're not trying to get me or Jack Posobiec or any of these other great people here today. They're trying to get every one of you and break your will and turn America into a tyranny because if America still exists, the rest of the world will aspire to it and it will be the model and freedom will grow. That I guess it's actually kind of more mainline GOP talking point now that I think about it. Maybe he takes it into a bit more of a manifest destiny spin, but I thought it was around here. Maybe, maybe it's just that mainline GOP talking point. That's why the world, after all, just like every man, the world itself needs an inspiration. We are target number one. And that's why God created this country. We're not perfect, but we've been the best house in a bad neighborhood. And we have been given a birthright and a destiny by God through free will. If we take on this challenge, Bingo. we won't just empower our families and ourselves. Through God, we will save the world. And that is Bingo. what we are doing here today. I've got homework for every single person in this room. I want to make sure. It's such a hard dunk. I'm just still recovering from it. I just, it's just, every atheist just got dunked on big time. Sure that when you leave here today, turn to the person next to you, make friends, get their contact info. Follow them on Twitter. All right. So they see. Well, what did I say about that clannish thing? It's so, it's so, the, the clannish, the clannishness butters it up. Not coming after him. They've got to get through him to get to Get me, get me, get totally me, get me. They're not trying to get me or Jack get me. Get me. or any of these other great people here today. They're trying to get every get one me, get of me. you. Ah, get me, get me, he's going to get me, he's going to get me. And no doubt it'll be lost on someone what the hell that was, what I just did. And so just to give the full context, it's from this scene. It's from the Pandaverse episode, of course. And you should all know, because you should all do at least a minimal effort to stay on top of the, you know, <laughs> at least those South Park episodes that are received well by the internet or those, you know, somewhat based quarters of the internet. And that's this is one of the such episodes. But, you know, now it's, he's going to get you, Kathleen Kennedy, he's going to get you. And then, of course, no one, everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about, you fat piece of shit? You paranoid fat piece of shit. But, you know, in the episode, it's actually happening. But then, you know, everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about, Cartman? And just ignore that Cartman is actually onto something here. Just pretend he's as paranoid and, and deluded as Jones. He's gonna get ya. He's gonna get ya. And then Butters being the naive, stupid. He's, he's the freaked out one. So that's the audience. That's the Turning Point USA audience is... But this tells you all you need to know about political grasp and how much of it is stylistic. So Kali brings up wrestling and politics, and so inevitably, 
Stone Cold Steve Austin, wouldn't he be one of the MAGA guys now? Like, Steve Austin was against all establishment, even, even the establishment of his employer and somehow maintained. Well, I guess he was a big star by then. But, you know, there were these storylines in which he got fired precisely because he was too anti that you, you couldn't control him as the chant. But my colleague goes, wouldn't he be now one of the MAGA guys? And I'm like, you, you just, it, too much of your understanding is stylistic. MAGA is an establishment, it, it's the GOP establishment right now. But all along, it was a sort of establishment. You couldn't be sacrilegious within MAGA. That's why even Trump won't be. You can't be sacrilegious in MAGA. They house the evangelicals. There's no open, exhibitive, even tame mockery of, of all theism. Uh, of course, there's no discussions of deism or any of these things, but one, one thing you don't see is open mockery of theism within MAGA. Steve Austin, that's the, that's the John 316 inverter, Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's why he sold a lot of merch with Austin 316. See, that's a little, that's a little sacrilegious. I don't see too many MAGA-wearing, Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt-wearing individuals. That's, that's usually two different packages. Three, six, Austin 316 says, I just whipped your ass. It's a little sacrilegious. It's, it's a lot sacrilegious. So no, no, you're wrong, colleague. Steve Austin, Steve Austin would not have been at home at MAGA just because he's Southern and kind of flagrantly Southern. Too much of your understanding, and perhaps many people's understanding, is, is stylistic. You know, Austin in a political coalition. I, I, just, I just don't see it. Probably a big gun guy, though, but that's an aside. God, look at him. Bless him. In a way, you can say, you know, bless him. Still going, still got to make those weekly rounds. Very, very interesting. That kind of commitment. <laughs> Even more weirdly idiosyncratic than, than I do, YouTube, is this weekly commitment. And he's just, he's just always, he's always, whether or not he's up for it, he'll do it. But he, he still thinks he's in it based on all these titles. He really still has himself convinced that he's in it to win it or he's in it because whatever, we got to make it happen. Whatever he thinks we got to make happen, that's why he's in it. That's why he does this. He's like, no, you don't get it. You're in it for the same reason I'm in it. Identical. It's just I'm more honest. I'm in it. I just came up with a tagline. I'm in it because I'm just a man who refuses to suffer fools in silence. And so if I recorded, because I don't want to suffer, I don't want to suffer them in silence. So if I recorded, it might as well go up, right? But, but that's, I'm not here to make something happen. I'm just a man who refuses to suffer all these fools who are now so easy to detect because of things like twatter. It's like the people who bang on about traditional values. It's like they, they finally discovered like twatter and they really, they hang on twatter a lot. So it's like, it's never been easy to see how thin their um, thought process, can we call it? Anyway, it's just so easy to detect fools. They're everywhere. The internet is a fool's paradise. And so it's like, I'm, I'm not going to suffer fools in silence. I'm going to do these videos. But it's like, he thinks he's here because we got we to gotta make something happen. Something very draconian we've got to make happen. Because, you know, we're not going to get everyone to go along. But he's, he's okay with that. But it's just the kind of schedule, right? Because he doesn't, you know, on first blush... He doesn't strike me as that much of a schedule or like, you know, 18 years, how, however many years now, you know, on schedule, on route, what the fuck's have to be done on Sunday? It's like 18 years. He, it's weird, man. It's weird that whether he's up for it or not, or not, he'll do it. But yeah, it's like freaking clockwork. But it's all just, you know, it's all samey because he just thinks he has to make something happen instead of just, you know, just, just. Just fess. You're here because you don't want to suffer fools in silence. There's nothing wrong with that. It's egoic, but there's nothing wrong with being egoic. Right? There's nothing wrong. No one can be blamed thickly for anything. Right? Determinism, Mr. Determinism. Right? So just fess to what you are, Mr. Determinism. Fess to what you are. Fess to what you are. I guess I should also point out I didn't even know. I didn't even notice till after I watched the clip back that they're doing this. I don't know, they're probably doing this for everyone, right? Because they control. It's not something I can, it's not something I can undo, I don't think. It's true. Tesla, right? Oh, it's the birthday. Okay, that's why. See, that's how little fucks I give, but he gives a lot of fucks. So it's not like I just want to make it out. Like, oh, no, it's, it's, co it's coincidental. I just, I just went to the channel on Nikola Tesla's birthday, but I, I didn't realize the little Nikola Tesla thing until I watched the clip back a few minutes ago. So yes, um, I guess a double, <laughs> double whammy against Gary, because 
for whatever reason, Gary's got a lot, a lot against this fella. Or it's like, as is usually the case, right? It's, you should just be neutral. I realized that they were turning off a lot of people with um, swastikas, neo-Nazi The black aesthetics, pill? Right? That was not going to win over a lot of people. So now they try to wrap themselves in the American flag. Oh, but... the darkest corners of the internet, the darkest corners of the internet. Yeah, the thing is, though, they're not actually black pill. Black pill means, like, fatalism plus pessimism. They know they don't have majorities. But that's not even what these, you know, people she calls black pillars believe. Like, those black pillars are just like, she's just like latched herself onto Nazis, followed Nazis, and then it's like... Or, you know, whatever, neo-Nazis. Eh, just neo-Confederates, essentially. And then, like, they're saying they're black-pilled, and so she thinks, like, that's what the black pill is. Like, no, black pill's just, like, pessimism plus fatalism. Support. Not those dweebs. And that people would counter But even those dweebs are like, oh, it's too dark, it's too dark. Y'all are just, of course they are, because it's MSNBC. Test them. So what they do are these... <laughs> whatever, menstrual cycle, something, <laughs> SNBC. Bobs, these unannounced big provocations. Yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's just an estrogen show. That's what this is. Spectacles. It's a show for people with so no high estrogen. People will counter-protest them, and then they can film it. Because the real audience is not Nashville. It's everyone on the internet. Ellie, are they trying to affect these groups that do the flash mob? Are they trying to affect the politics? The I like the directing, though. It's almost as good as my directing. The country, or are they trying to just express their kind of uh, anti-Semitism, racism, and whatever the case may be? Because you have some people that use the Internet that try to sway the public view. And then others that are just yeah, like like, like uh, me, like uh, me. Venting. What, yeah, what, what, I'm just I'm answer? just venting. I'm just ve I'm just venting, Reverend. I'm just a man who what is it? I'm just a man who refuses to suffer fools in silence. They want more power. Right? You need to clear your throat, by the way. I want to bring in more people. That's why you see a shift. A lot of a lot of gargly. A lot of you know. Sometimes this MSNBC like they they keep these people employed who should have like not been employed anymore because you know the people get as pundits they get tenured like mr al sharpton they absolutely want more power but it's like you're you're so old you can't like you're gargle speaking all the time he's he's gargles racism. just listen to him. he's trying to just express their kind of uh anti-semitism racism and whatever the case may be he's got gargle voice 24 7. <laughs> because you have some people that use the internet that try to sway the public view you, no and you don't say that are just sort of like uh, we we uh, just we just refuse to suffer fools in silence that's all it is that's all it needs to be uh, venting what, 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 and how did you know you fake this? black pill alarmism they absolutely want more power and they want to bring in more people that's why you see a shift in their tactics uh, Nick Fuentes, who expressed doubt that the Holocaust... Oh, I can't wait for my Fuentes stuff. Oh, God, that's that's going to be in Beware Each Social Canard. I do a good... I do some fun stuff with Mr. Nick. ...happened, dined with former President Trump. He has talked a lot about the Great Replacement Theory coming out in more mainstream conservative places. And what he says is, like, over the last six years... Yeah, but none of you will actually challenge them with the actual way to challenge them, right? It's incompatible because you all want to be family people. So, you know, you all kind of give them an in because you all say to, to be a family person is, you know, yeah, we're going to care about certain people far more than others. And it's going to have nothing to do with character. But, you know, we're small, so we need families. But everyone just understands. Everyone who's like, you know, you don't even have to be politically pro-family. You know, all these, you know, Joe and just the other turds, they're all pro-family. But maybe not politically like the, you know, rabid kind of cons are now politically pro-family. But it's like still, you you know, it's got nothing to do with character. So, of course, Nick Fuentes is just going to kind of run with us. Like, well, ethnicity is kind of like an extended family. So, yeah, we're going to call it an invasion because they're not our family. And none of you people ever think that far. Have I gotten closer to the Republican Party or have they gotten closer to me? And Fuentes argues that they've come closer to him. So, you write this book about the internet. Yeah what they really have gotten some Republicans, not all, but some Republicans to repeat things that were inconceivable eight years ago. How did this pipeline... Well, they weren't. Not if you were very online like I was. Not, not. The only thing that's really annoying is that, you know, they haven't, like, taken the voters to task. Like, most of the people who voted Bush are the people who voted Trump, but they're all like, oh, it's the, you know, it's the other people. It's like, no, there's just these people who vote red all the time. 
you know, but the kind of presentation in their bubbles is like, it's a bunch of different people who voted Bush and the good people voted Trump. It's like, no, no, it's the same for the most part. It's these same fucking people. They're just lifelong, you know, hand on the Bible types. And it's just, yeah, it's just really bad. But yeah, Kamala, Kamala got, Kamala got the nod and there was no competition for it either. Kamala got the nod. <sighs> she should have proven herself, you know, open convention. So they are fascists. Many of them are anti-Semitic. Bunch of their yeah, a critical, crucial component of fascism that just never gets brought up is you know exit rights. You know, fascist is supposed to deny exit rights, whereas you get the sense with Trump, you know, well he'd like nothing more than for all the progs to leave the country. But you know, typically fascists in the past, like no one can leave the country. Their palaver, what they do and preach, is anti-Semitic. Why are they so drawn to Donald Trump? They like that he doesn't apologize. They like that he offends people. Oh my God, straight out of 2016, the segment, right? It could have been straight out of 2016. Can't you guys see that you're just doing a loop? <laughs> and you know, eight years from now, it's gonna be the same type of segment. Instead of just swap the name Trump for the name Vance or something else. Hang on, I should close. The birds are too loud. The birds are too loud. The birds are too loud. And doesn't apologize for that. Yeah, so it's like it's gonna be about Vance eight years from now, and like eight years from them, it's gonna be about some new hack, maybe Vivek. But the movement ain't going away. Even when Trump croaks, the movement ain't going away. It's a mentality. So stop doing the same fucking segment around election time every year. Oh, they you know like being offensive. You know who the fuck doesn't? What do you people who believe like Christianity is bullshit? Do you really? You know, is it less fun to mock the stupid Christians when they get offended? No, it's it's kind of more fun when they're offended. Um, the former white because it just shows how brittle their worldview is. And yes, yeah, some some of your worldview is brittle, and that's why you know you you're so you know non pulsed when you see people laughing at your stupid beliefs. Specialist Matt Heimbach told me that he, when Donald Trump was elected, it was quote better than sex for him, and he didn't think he'd ever feel that feeling that good again because. It wasn't about Trump, but that all the people who had made his life difficult, all the people that he hated, were so angry mm. and so upset, and he loved seeing them suffer. When he said that to you, that it's better than sex, were you sitting down? Did you want to move away? <laughs> what yeah, this man hasn't read shop on the life of the species and all that stuff. This man thinks, you know, when, you, when you're infatuated, you're following your own ends. Why would you have such a reaction? I mean, it's kind of noble. It's not noble in that guy's specific case, because it's all schadenfreude. But yeah, it's kind of noble when something, you know, ideological or intellectual is, is better than sex. I wouldn't want to move away from one such person. That sounds like a person who is, you know, not enslaved to the species. That's all sexuality is, a guy who looks familiar but whose name I don't know. That's all sexy times is. It just nature implants an illusion in you, you know, as with all instinct. So it can get you to not knowing it, but to pursue the interests of the species thinking it's just your own interest. None of these people have ever, like they live, their all, they live all their lives not having ever taken that into account. Whereas like, I always intuited that. And then I read the shop chapters like, oh, there's a terminology for it. <laughs> what was your reaction? We were on the phone. I was oh. like, hmm, I'm not sure I would admit that if I were a man in my 20s, but you know, I just tried to roll. Well, what if you were in a gal in her 20s, which I, I don't think you are. I think you're a gal in her 30s. But you know, why is it, you know, extra bad for a man in his 20s to admit one such thing? Why do you want men to be mutts and to be ashamed that they want to be less mutt-like? But in that guy's case, it was stupid because it was schadenfreude. And because, you know, he's a pro-Trumpy and that's like next level stupid. But, you know, someone wants to say something non-sexual is better than something sexual. Um, God bless. With it. And lastly, briefly, is there, is there anything that you see that can be done to stop this spread? And, you know, I'd say, you know, even better than wanking, if you don't want to say the mutual part. Yeah, there's certain things that can even be better than wanking. Or is this an irreversible trend? I think if you have... You know, a good poem, well, you know, hard to come by, one that, that's that good, but, you know, a good, um, you know, a good shop chapter. I'm going to say a good shop chapter, especially if you smoke the good stuff. Put that on, it's got a good reader. A good chapter is better than, than, than wanking and sex combined. Uh, especially young male relatives. Yeah, but these people, you, you all just want people to be led about by their pelvis. Might be. So I guess it's not just MAGA that's led about by their pelvis. You guys also want the brain and the pelvis to be co-conspirators. 
against wisdom. Going a little bit fascist, engage with them, don't insult his intelligence, but like you have to keep that conversation going because the biggest problem is being in this bubble and not breaking out of it. All right. Yeah. An important new book titled Black Pill, How I Witnessed it's the not, Corners of the it's Internet not, Come to Life. It's Point not. These people have no idea. You know, it... Just like with clown world, you know, they say clown world, but they don't think the world is at bottom, you know, unsalvageable or something. They just think it's the people who made it that way. But they use the word clown world. It's like, no, you, know, you have to believe it's irredeemable. Just with the black bill, you have to believe pessimism plus fatalism equals irredeemable world. But not some, you know, we have political grievances because we're fascists and, you know, the world's not fascist enough for us. That's not the black pill. Because fascism, you know, endeavors to repair things in terms of the things it views as, you know, <laughs> requiring repairs. We'll repair things through might makes right. There, that's fascism. None of it is black pill. Poison society. How I witnessed the darkest corners of the internet come to life. Poison society. Oh, yeah, society was just so brilliant before 2016. Yeah, I was just, I was just so enjoying society before 2016. You all are a bunch of dullards, and, and that's why you want men. You want men to be. You want men to be ashamed. Oh, way to go, me! <laughs> yeah, that's that's how you seem, Dame. You seem that way twenty four seven. You want men to be ashamed of not admitting that they're being led about by their pelvis. That's what you want. You want men to weep for dullards. <laughs> he wept for dullards. Yeah, you want all men to weep for dullards. Because. It wasn't about Trump, but that all the people who had made his life about Trump and to flourish there. So they are fascists. Yeah, Many I played this part. Some kind of Calvinist predestination where some things are you're destined to be a good person and some things you're a bad person and an oppressor. It's this weird. Well, I mean, you are destined. You're just not predetermined, right? You're um, slated, we can say. There's no getting around necessity, whether it's determined or predetermined. There's no getting around necessity. So you all got to just kind of talk about that and try to split those kinds of hairs on, where is this? MSNBC? It's an MSNBC show. So I'm just, I'm just comically <laughs> trying to get them to go into the weeds when we know they won't. Neo-racist thing. And it's, it's terrible. Neo-racist. I like the term neo -racist. I think John McWhorter used neo-racist once or twice. I'm here in New York right now with you guys. People going to Dalton, the board of Dalton, they're teaching first graders weird sex ed stuff. It's like, this is a weird religion. We weird sex ed stuff. Yeah, so like, what, I mean, what do you think they should teach? Do you really think they should just teach the dry biological story? Add a little color into it by saying words like birds and bees. But aside from that, it should just be this dry biological story. That Should that be sex ed? I mean, I get it. First grade is, is too young, but you know, a few years thereafter. Yes, teach the biology end of it. But then also, also, you know, go back to the classics. Incorporate what Shop wrote about. You leave all these kids thinking that when they become infatuated or something more intense, when they fall in love, we leave them all thinking that it's it's their own ends that they're following. When it's just so manifestly clear. Each time I reread the damn chapter, it's just so manifestly clear. It's the ends of the species, they're duped into it, by which process a chimera, which vanishes following the consummation of the act, it, it vanishes and leaves you feeling like you chased the most arduous bone that ain't worth the toilet paper um, writing it's written on something something and they're spreading in, in, in your in the blue city you gotta stop it but what is it is it it's yeah, it's a, it's, it's social justice about. fundamentalism it's maybe wokeness there's all sorts of words for it it's a marxist adjacent new religion i can i can do with marxist adjacent it's not just marxist but i can do with people who say marxist adjacent and it's it's seeing the world through it's oppressor true. oppressed frameworks but it's, 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 it's this new way of approaching the world that, that is fr frankly broken and frankly comes from like a bad set of philosophies that have been imposed on us. So that was like... Ew, Cody. Uh, yeah, it's just going to end up being about that as this goes on. Because what is it? What is this? You want to just stop calling you weird and stop being weird. You know, it's just not the... You know, it's not the ammo you think it is. Not in a culture where, like, thinking is weird, you know? If you really, you know, drill down on the average person, they'll just find, wait a minute, you think too hard, you're weird. That, like, that's, that's what it is if you're seeing the culture. But, you know, so as much as I think these are, you know, turds and cretins and everything under the book, you know, as I've expounded on in the previous vid, you know, and everything they do, and yeah, they, they might as well look like this too. They don't look that much better, right? Krang. Krang and whatever. Um, I should have queued up some images. 
but you know, uh, I got this in the bag. I'm just gonna keep saying weird. I got this in the bag. Yeah, you ain't gonna get this in the bag. You just might find yourself oddly surprised. You just might find yourself oddly surprised. And all I'm saying is, you know, they suck more on the policy front and the culture front and all just all their, all their innumerable flaws. But, you know, let me be weird with them. I guess that's what this has come down to, right? Let me be weird with them. And, you know, let's us all be weird with them. You know, not vote for them, but let's, yeah, let's, let's double down. Let's make them and, and various others, let's make them sweat. Because this is just, you know, they just want to get out of jail free card on certain, certain kinds of misbehaviors. They just want to get out of jail free card. Well, they got to earn it. There's no such thing as free lunch. So, you know, weird? No, no, no. I shall not. I shall not cow to certain, uh, certain, uh, you know, psychological war game. <laughs> Mostly on the part of the dame. I shall not cow to certain a psychological war frame game on the part of the dames. And, you know, really dames who ought to know better. Dames who want a lot of responsibility. You ought to know better to play this click shit. This, you know, the hive's got certain tricks up its sleeve. The hive, the beehive. Okay. Bro, okay, my brain is... Try not to say bro, Destiny. It's not a big deal or anything, but try not to say bro. My brain is fried, okay? We went through so many of these accounts last night. They all tweet, oh, this A. O'Connell guy or whatever? Holy banger, Jeff. Thank you, Albert. By far and away, my biggest tweet. This is not a real person. Trump 2004. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> Purebred American alpha male. The left. They're, they're so easy to ape. The worst nightmare. They're, what? They're so easy for this, you know, pre-general AI to ape. A AI apes the typical real human being when they're a con and a MAGA con on Twitter. AI can ape their shtick. To the point where they're, whoever, like, this is someone's product. No. You understand? Even though it's AI, it's someone's product. Someone is confident enough that this can ape the tactics of the, let's say, less than sophisticated twatter who's kind of pro-MAGA. Not impugning the MAGA movement in general. Offliners, you know, they, they're, they're less initiated. <laughs> but the initiated online MAGAs, they're the equivalent of this. Yeah. <laughs> the left's the worst, worst nightmare. nightmare. I'm sure the left is pooping its pants. Oh, wait. They are. The left poops its pants over something that is so intellectually inferior to it because they're not intellectually situated. They're politically situated, and that's their problem. You, can, you should never, like, even if it is at the doorstep, you should never poop your pants by something that is so low-grade it can be aped by AI, purebred American alpha male, and they're quivering in their boots. What? Purebred American <laughs> alpha male, the left's worst nightmare. What? But the theocracy part truly is bad. Mouth is still numb from the dentist two hours. But you know, they're quivering in their boots because, oh, some of the runaways are going to be sent home or, you know, denied entry. It might be over for me. And some of the runaways are going to be separated as families. What? This isn't a real account. And some of the runaways are going to be, you know, denied amnesty and the letter of the law won't be followed. Like, but at no point along the way will you blues ask, well, why those runaways have so many goddamn children despite living in unstable lands? They lived in unstable lands and they had so many children. They had more children than kind of, you know, sober-minded, <laughs> low-income earning Americans do. Sober-minded, low-income earning Americans. You know, if someone's going to have children, no one should have children. But if someone's going to have children, it better be, you know, those, you know, low-income earning Americans. You know, because at least their country's stable. Like, these, these guys below, below the border, their countries aren't stable. And they're coming with children. You know, God bless those children. It's not their fault. You know, but like if if you on the on the basis of your mercy for those children, if you empower many other things politically on the basis of, the, of wanting to have mercy for those children, you guys aren't thinking long term. No, this is not a real person. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But they, but they comment on like current events and everything, right? Yesterday might be the craziest day in political history since JFK's. They comment like they look kind of like real 
People God, I just want to see a, crazy I want to see a bit of that again. Thinking. God, a rapist, a rapist, a white beater. But Steve Austin's awesome. But yeah, rapist, rapist, white beater. <laughs> WrestleMania back in 07. That happened. Comment. Like, they look kind of like real. But, you know, I, I thought, like, when I gave my friends the stunner, I, I thought I was Steve. <laughs> giving people the stunner, giving his competitors a stunner with 20,000 people cheering me on. I... Some part of me thought that, but I, I outgrew my vain hopes, see? But I, when I gave my friends the stunner, I thought I was Steve, but I, I outgrew my vain hopes. People. Um, many, a, many a man can't outgrow his Justin vain Thomas hopes. Justin Thomas is tired of the crazy disrespect. Is that a sports reference, or is this supposed to say Justice Thomas? Do you have any... Is this a sports God, Destiny, I'm making it all about me. I'm sorry. Reference that I'm not aware of, or... Is this was this supposed to be Justice Thomas, Clarence? Yeah, is it? Yeah, my my parts are better. Destiny's just a vehicle at this point. Okay, so then. I'm but curious, you know, like, you know who, what so, it is. Okay, so it's I just that, clicked this. I'm just curious who responded to this. You get two that, responses. Who's responding to this guy? It's that whole period, right? It's the 17th of July. It's that we're still in the you know ricochets. It's the ricochets of this drama, and it's the ricochets of the Trumpy thing. It's just. All right, this can't go in man-child debunk societal norms, and it can't even go in who are the weaklings. This is going to have to go sometime later. This started out as a kind of gender thing, so maybe it's going to go there, but yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I just can't stop, because Destiny's disclosing so much craziness on Twitter. I've been going hard on Twitter. Destiny's disclosing that Twitter is even dumber and worser and more absurd than even... I thought it was because the twatter targeted destiny right. and okay. how I haven't been at the liberal dentist since 9-11 that was the wake-up call I needed is this a real account it's just it's just it's just hilarious the AGI's the the pre AGI can can nail the mindset of the Volk <laughs> Bro, okay, no, I spent, I spent hours last night. I spent hours last night going through these fucking accounts, okay? I don't know if, I don't think any of these are real. I don't think Maybe you ought to get some sleep, man. Any of these people are real. See, the one reason I'm somewhat grounded is because I know that I've got to get at least four hours of sleep on those shift nights. He makes his money from them and, and other things, but mostly from talking online. And so he doesn't have to go to work four nights a week. Plus, he has August serve him and do his editing for him. I, I don't have an August. Plus, I gotta fucking go to work four nights a week. But I just get the sense that he has these, like I have during my vacations, he has these consecutive days that are sleepless. Okay. Because he's so damn active. And... It's, you know, it's endearing. But yeah, I'm a little jelly. Mostly because you have your August. Serve you food and do your editing, you asshole. All right, so like, here's an account. This guy here, this is not a real person. Right? This is not a real human being. This picture, this is not real. This person is not, this is not a real person. Okay? This is not a... <laughs> I'm sorry, Destiny. I've got to kill some of your momentum. You've been on mad momentum. I've got to kill... No, that's... That's Bud. Grew up with Bud, went to high school with Bud. I know Bud's whole history. It's Sherry is tight and fat. Bud says he'll go for it. Bud is reported. Bud serves more time. Something, something, you know, pen pal with felon. Um, at the end, at the end, what is it? It's, it's Bud isn't based in the end. Bud doesn't learn. I know, I know the prototypical Bud, thus I know this Bud. This is a real man. This is not a real person. Right? But no, it's it's Bud. Haven't you seen the record? It's Bud. When you scroll through his account, like you will find him like and other people, they like they, they talk to each other. Um Oh, this account, we went through this one. This account, this guy, this is not a real account, okay? Um he, this this guy tweets at me. All right. Yeah, maybe that's Bud, actually. Yeah, that's who the record's about. It's far more likely that that's who the record's about, not the first guy. Okay. Um, but these guys, they, they tweeted each other. They talked 
All right. And you know, the watermelon thing, by the way, everyone, just for the record, the watermelon thing can be humorous and innocently so. But yeah, it's, uh, he likes his sherry fat. Um, but these guys, they, they tweeted each other. They talked to each other, right? So these bots will, they go through, they talk to each other to build, um, to build engagement with each other. I'm, I'm very early on into this. I hope you prove it beyond assertions. Um, some of the, I've always thought, you know, some of the worst things in Libland is, you know, the overdiagnosis of, you know, the bots. But then it's like, how do you know? Oh, because there's troll ant farms. Like, how do you know that? You know, another one of these collective knowledge things. Oh, way to go. You've got another mode of collective knowledge, knowing what's a troll ant farm. These are but, you know, maybe you'll change my mind on this. This is still early on, but it's like... They've been tweeting at me and shit. But they, um, each other, they talk to each other, right? So these bots will, they go through, they talk to... That <laughs> bot isn't based in the end. <laughs> he posted a picture where tap the fuck in and the left is shitting their pants. None of these hands are black. He's not black in this. This is not him. This isn't real. This is not a real... This picture is not from this account. This is not this... Per I'm not even sure if this person is real. Um, oh, wait. Ornaman arrested on drug trafficking charges. Oh, that's where the picture comes from. Oh, okay. This is not real. This account is not real. Terrell Walker, 28, originally from New York and now residing in Orono. Okay, anyway, okay. We're not, okay, we're done, we're done, okay. This... Best digital ID theft Elon can buy. Destiny, a guy ended his campaign after saying, yeah, too enthusiastically at a rally. Fuck, who was that? No fucking way. Was that Rick Perry? It no right? fucking oh, way. Who was that? Who was that? See, it's so weird. All the stuff he remembers that's just so unremarkable. That's got a letter of the law that does help him, you know. He takes on these all-comers. But to me, this is just so weird. He can memorize so much crap and then stuff that's just further away. But it's just so memorable. That was 04. That was my introduction. Is that primary season. It's fucking Howard Dean. You know. Ted, Tom, Ted something? You gotta no. be kidding me. Was this in 2000? That was like the first quote-unquote scandal. Who am I thinking of? Oh, oh, Howard Dean. This is a long time ago. 2000. Was this really that big of a deal? Yeah. 2004? This is a long, long time ago. Oh, come on. You know something? This you is my something? political infancy. If you Genuine question, why they tied the border bill to Ukraine funding? No, come um, on, play it, Destiny. Always, come like, on, play it. Come on. He's going to He's gonna do it. <laughs> whole beast okay i did it instead of him come on we want to hear it i can just play it but i want destiny to play it destiny, i just wanted to tell you this before it's too late oh it's gonna tease us with it before it's too late that's a little ominous thank you for being yourself regardless of what the status quo is I and then john kerry john kerry reporting for duty you know the way conan took the piss out of him god that was a great that was such a fun year i'm gonna come out and say 2004 was the last truly great fun year it was coincidentally the last time i wasn't you know online a lot <laughs> love that i was able to at least witness someone of your help but yeah just come on destin you got to memorize these things these are kind of political milestone things you can't just be you know, you're not that much younger, buddy. You should, this is, this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Or thank you, I think. You know something? This is embarrassing, Wait, but that he doesn't, fun. that he doesn't know it is even more I didn't more realize how truly bad January 6th was till your recent commentary. I want to ask uh, you how you consume information accurately. I feel like because of biases in media, how do I consume day-to-day -day articles? You stay off Twitter. Stay informed on issues while not- Something I don't do. Not getting biased reporting from either side mixed in. I feel like having to read three to four articles from different sources to get no, an after. No, come on, Almost Dean. Nobody. Let's do Dean. Let's do yeah. Dean. He's gonna Told play. us one year something, and we're going to South Carolina. Yeah. Oklahoma, yeah. Arizona, and North Dakota and New Mexico. We're going to California and Texas and New York. And we're going to South Dakota and Oregon and Washington and Michigan. And then we're going to Washington D.C. to take back the White House. Yeah. Yeah. Stick it to the man. 
<laughs> See, it was good. It was good until it wasn't. It was good until it wasn't. We will not give up. Yeah. We will not give up in New Hampshire. He's probably going to use the word fight, too. We will fight. We will not give up in South Carolina. But I was going off on the word fight before the assassination. I need to be given credit. The assassination attempt, I mean. Ever since then, you know, the word fight, like other people are picking up on it. You know, stop using these words post-literally. We need to be militant literalists about certain words. And maybe all words. We will not give up in Arizona or New Mexico, Oklahoma, North Dakota, Delaware, Pennsylvania. Oh. No, it's going to be it's going to be Kerry. And then Bush is going to hire these, you know, strategists who are going to lie about Kerry's record. And then Bush is going to win. That's that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Bush is going to win by lying, by getting people to get to successfully lie about Kerry's record. And Kerry's just not going to make that much of a fuss about it. Michigan. Because I'm John Kerry and I'm reporting for duty and I must be wooden all my life long. That's all I can ever be is extremely wooden. We will not quit now or ever. We want our country back. The opposite the of this. Americans. The opposite of this. In 2004, not 20. Well, if you want the country back for ordinary Americans, maybe you ought to just kind of, I don't know, wear a tank shirt. 2016, when we had more meme energy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What do you say? I did this in 2004. And I Our country back for ordinary Americans. I did this in 2004 and not 2016 when we had more meme energy. Mm. Don't forget hiring more asylum officers and judges to educate, um, or, I'm sorry, adjudicate and enforce cases, even without a cap, the bill is good. Yeah, of course, yeah. If it wasn't capped at 5K, it's a 5, yes. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But the theme park was good. That's all sexy times is. It's just nature and plants an illusion in you. You know, as with all instinct. So oh, you... but see, that's one of the weird things. I bet that's what they just dismiss instantly. But, oh, that's just another weird thing. It's like double weird. It's even weirder than the Vance thing. Yeah, that's right. Bring it on. Bring it on. I want to I wanna go on stage with every single one of these. A anyone who's ever used and hurled this weird thing over these last few weeks. I freaking defy you. Get up on a stage with me and call me weird and watch me just intellectually demolish you. Because you just know, if this video went viral and they heard this point about the speeches, they would go, oh, just another weird thing. We're going to use this weird word as an attack word. Yeah, I say fucking bring it on. I'll fucking, I'll fucking pay for it. I'll arrange for it. I'll pay for it. The stadium, bring in a crowd. Call me weird on stage. I fucking defy you. Call me weird. Hear me make this kind of point. Call me weird on stage and watch me demolish you. And not even call you weird in return. I know you're not weird. I know you're normies. And I know how your brains work. When you can't grasp something, you just call it weird. But see, that's not enough to actually demolish it. You would just you would just get demolished by me. You know, wait till I wait till I come up with the chapter video. Wait till I come up with the chapter video. It's been delayed again. Because things just keep happening IRL, so the chapter video has been delayed again. The Garden of Hedon video has been delayed again, but it's coming.